rules and introduce you to the show. Uh, tonight we're doing an open mic. Um, just so you know what that means, we're all comedians just trying out material to see if something works. Um, hopefully everything you see tonight will be amazing, but there's a possibility that it won't be. If that happens, don't worry, you don't have to boo. All, all you have to do is be quiet, and we will know that it was horrible. <laughs> um, the point is for laughter, so if you, uh, if you hear something funny, then laugh. Um, just a couple house rules for the comics. Uh, I didn't get to talk to you every, every one of you before the show. I thought that I would just say something now. Um, we do have a couple rules. It's just some general stuff. Um, please, no hack material tonight. Like, no minority report jokes or just general spy jokes. That's just way overdone. Um, I know that was a stupid joke. See, you guys did it right. You didn't boo me. Thanks. Um, I know that it's typical at like comedy venues, like you see it in movies and cartoons all the time and somebody doesn't do something that's funny to throw tomatoes at them. I'm sure none of you brought your tomatoes, but in the event that you brought your Halloween candy, go ahead and throw it all at us, except for the Smarties. It'll just go right over our heads. Oh. That was okay. See, I know that I didn't, that was a stupid joke also, but that's still an appropriate response. <laughs> um, please, for real though, no heckling. Uh, a lot of us have worked a couple weeks on this material and just having anybody say anything to us will just completely throw us off, so we'll really appreciate it if you just let us keep moving on our train. Um, I'd love to thank AB in the hot spot for letting us use this venue again. This is our home venue and it's really great to come back every two weeks. Um, please take care of your bartender and waitresses tonight. They are taking care of us. Um, and without further ado, I'd like to introduce your host for the night, Ken Edwards. Give it up for Rosie. You'll see her again later. How's it going, Hotspot? So what I need, first of all, is a round of applause from those of you who have been to one of these before. And now I'd like to hear from everyone who has never been here before for one of these. That is awesome. That's our first round of new people clapping in like a few months, so I hope we don't scare you guys away <laughs> like we did all the other people before that. Uh, so yeah, I appreciate you guys coming to this comedy viewing tonight. We don't have a body yet, but let's wait and see how hard our comedians kill. Uh, there's, I have 10 great comics up for you, but unfortunately you're gonna have to listen to me try out a little bit of material before that. Uh, you guys like Halloween? How'd it go for you? Yeah. I like scary movies, that's my favorite part of Halloween. Not that you can't watch them all year, but you know, that's the designated month. It's like Halloween has, uh, scary stuff has its own Black History Month. We're like, we can only, we can only acknowledge how scary this stuff is <laughs> in the month of October. The thing that pisses me off though, and it's a, it's a trope that happens in so many movies, is the cat that jumps out of the closet when, you know, tension is building up. But it never gets me, the only horror about that moment is how horrible a pet owner, anybody who screams at that is, because they've locked their cat in the closet, and once it jumps out, they don't recognize it. Um, so, I hate to get political, but I have a question. Who, who voted yesterday? Yeah? You guys looking forward to a big reward for that? I can tell you, you've already gotten it, and it is in the form of a sticker. <laughs> I have plenty of those left over from childhood, so I stayed home. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I voted for Obama twice, and it's not like I think he's the antichrist that a lot of people think he is, but my life has not changed, like at all, other than my age, since before his presidency. I can do just as much 
shit that I want to do, nothing's going to change. If you vote for, oh man, this turned into a soapbox platform. It's like I had material written down, and I was like, politics came up. Hey, listen to me. Good. Oh, now I have support. Don't do that. This will just become my soapbox. Comedy, soapbox, night at the hotspot. No, my, my big problem with politicians is like, even if they stand for things that I support, they always are for other things I don't support. Like, you know, defense is a big topic on both sides, and both sides have different approaches to it, but defense is always an issue, and as long as our current system's in place, it's always going to be there. So, <clears throat> the way I would solve this problem of having home security, national security, is very unlike how other people would do it. Like, I view it as like, I am a child getting home from school, <clears throat> America is our house that we're walking up to, and our mother is the president, okay? Now, imagine you get off the bus, you've experienced a great day at school, and then you walk in the house, and there's a burglar right there. He has got like the burglar mask on, you're scared, right? But then you look up and you see, oh, Mom has a revolver to his head. Don't worry, we've got a bigger gun than he does, and we've got him on the ground. Go play Nintendo, Bobby. No, we're gonna be fine. Seriously, it's, it's just, look, as long as we have a bigger gun, he's not getting up. And then you go to school the next day and you come home, and, then, and some people's idea of solving this problem, further solving this problem is you come home and she's got a shotgun to his head. I've really got him today. Don't even worry about it. Next day, rocket launcher. Just rocket launcher aimed at his head. It's like, I don't feel safe anymore. <laughs> even if this guy does try to attack, you're gonna be taking yourself with him? Mom, I live in this house too. <laughs> My idea of solving defense would be like just asking the robber if his dad ever loved him and offering him a hot meal and a place to stay. <laughs> I don't think the president's very interested in anything along those lines. Uh, speaking of what's happening politically, some of the things that I do support that some people in power have changed are now gays can get married. Yeah, yeah, I, I notice only a handful of you are all about that. That's very interesting. Thanks for an interesting dichotomy of what you'd expect out of a comedy club. Uh, yeah, I had a friend who came out to me recently. Yeah, gross, right? I've only gone down on him like twice since then. <laughs> no, I... <laughs> I don't remember the joke I was going That was pretty good though, right? Um, yeah, I think that it's great that gays can get married, but I still think that if you were gay and dating somebody and hadn't come out of the closet before that happened, I recommend that you go ahead and marry your beard because then you can not only enjoy the joy of marriage but also the joy of divorce. Oh wow. <laughs> you guys don't like don't like divorce jokes, okay. I thought that was old hacky material. Should I go into some spy stuff now? You guys prove me wrong not to. You guys don't like hacky stuff. Well, that's why I'm not one of the featured comedians tonight. So, are you guys ready to get on with the show? All right. Uh, this guy closed out our show when we did our Halloween cover show with 20 minutes of original material he, on his 18th birthday, and he's been performing here for months, but now that he can legally be here, I'm gonna have him open the show for us. Everybody, put your hands together for Paige Campbell. Hey, hey, what's happening? All right, um, so genetic engineering is a big uh, ethical issue, right? If you don't know what genetic engineering is, it's like, uh, you know, uh, choosing the attributes that your child's gonna have uh, before they're born, right? So they can go in and change it. Um, I've created a completely ethical way to do it. Uh, I call it eyeballs. Basically, uh, you take the earbuds of your iPod and put them up to your balls, and you play a song that has the attributes you want your child to have, right? It works. I played uh, Louis Armstrong, and my son came out black. <laughs> you know, you can play like, uh, you play like The Who, like Pinball Wizard. He might come out deaf, dumb, and blind, but he'll be good at pinball. 
<laughs> um, I saw this uh, homeless guy and he had a sign that said, uh, anything helps, right? I was like, okay. So I went up and I kicked him in the nuts, gave him two titty twisters and jizz on his face. So I was like, don't really see how that helps, but he said anything, so. <laughs> Um, I saw these two homeless guys on the side of the road, right? They, there was one on this side, one on this side. I was driving, and I didn't, but I really wanted to uh, just like give like uh, a ton of money to like the guy on this side and be like, oh, I really hope this helps you, you know, hope God blesses you and all this stuff, and then just drive away and look at the other one. <laughs> uh, I, I saw a homeless guy with a chest tattoo, right? It looked like a shirt. I was driving and I saw, I thought he had a shirt on, but it was a chest tattoo. And I was like, wear a shirt if you have a chest tattoo, right? Because no one's going to pick you up if you have a chest tattoo. <laughs> um, I, I don't think it's uh, funny to make fun of the homeless, actually. I just did, but I don't think it's actually funny. I like to help the homeless. Um, like, something that I do is I like to, uh, I have a program where I give the homeless some exercise, right? So, like, uh, Basically, I tie some money on the back of my car and just drive. <laughs> and then when they get tired, I just put it in reverse and drive uh, over them. <laughs> um, so yeah, as Kim said, gay marriage is legal in Virginia now, right? Right, all right. I, it didn't work, but I'm still gonna do my gay jokes. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I, I heard like someone say, yeah, I don't think it's gonna bring them the satisfaction that they thought it was now that they can get married. I don't think marriage brings anyone the satisfaction. They thought it was going to be gay or straight, right? Um, one of the arguments they always use uh, against gay marriage is like, one of the arguments they always use against gay marriage is like, um, you know, uh, when I was when I was growing up, we didn't have to define marriage. Everyone knew marriage was between a man and a woman. That's it. Everyone knew. Um, I wonder if the people that like use that argument, because it's not a good argument, I wonder if the people that like use that argument, like, use that argument for everything in life, they're just like, ah, fucking little Caesars with their new pretzel pizza. When I was a kid, we didn't have to define what a pizza was. A pizza was marinara sauce, cheese, and dough. Now, now there's a pretzel crust? What? <laughs> it's not a pizza. Yeah. Um, so the, uh, the, uh, Great Awakening was during the 1700s, right? <laughs> Good segue, right? The Great Awakening is during the 1700s. Um, so here's an impression I have. This is a uh, this is a uh, pastor during the Great Awakening. The Bible says that all men are created equal. Give me some water, boy. <laughs> this is slavery. Um, so the slaves didn't enjoy being whipped. Slavery's horrible, obviously, but the slaves didn't enjoy being whipped. But there was probably like one dude that was like into S&M that did enjoy it, you know? Like, he's just like, ah. um, you'll have to answer to God for that. <laughs> um, I, uh, I like Cracker Barrel a lot, um, and I never, knew why, uh, I never knew why they called it Cracker Barrel, but I finally figured it out. Have you ever seen a black person in Cracker Barrel? <laughs> and I'm not talking about a black, a picture of a black kid on the wall. I'm talking about an actual black person. <laughs> um, I, uh... <laughs> I, uh... How do you, how do you, uh, rape a volleyball player? <laughs> I don't know, how do you? You spike or drink. <laughs> um, I wish they would just make the, uh, the, uh, mor morning after pill that just, I wish they would make morning after pills that looked like, uh, Flintstones, uh, vitamins, <laughs> you know? Because I'm giving them to my daughter anyway. <laughs> That's my set, guys. Keep a call from Paige Campbell. So to keep the politics going, that's what everyone wants, right? Uh, you know, with with the president, it's a lot of pressure. Like people think that like he's wasting his time when he's out golfing, but can you imagine the stress of just having that button in your office of just like, I'm really having a bad day. I could really mess someone else's day up a lot more. 
Ah, okay, I'm a good, I'm a good president. I'm a good, I'm a good guy. So that's why you need that off time to actually, when it comes down to make decisions, to be in there and ready for it. But can you imagine how much stress that is? Like, it's so much stress. That's why I think when you get out of office, like we just pay their, their salary to live for the rest of their lives. Like, which is probably best for their safety, right? Because if you can imagine Bush or Obama in any office scenario, there's automatically just a slew of people that just have something against them. Just, uh, I didn't get that note about that client. Am I? You're fired. Yeah, but that's the Republican and reception's fault. I never liked you anyway. Uh, but yeah, there should be that stress. There should be a government-funded restaurant management outreach program. Because when I worked in a restaurant, there's no greater stress that the average man knows. So that's where you can apply it, or else you'll just go crazy. I imagine Obama just like, you know, as a chef in a restaurant, just like, that's where he'd probably finally give some orders and make some changes and do some things, right? <laughs> because he would have the freedom to do so. As much freedom as he previously allowed. Soapbox, this is bad. I'm not going to do this again. Just, just bear with me. But yeah, uh, I feel like uh, that would be the worst place for him to be because as soon as somebody starts complaining about their chicken wings, you know, they don't understand him anyway because a, he's extremely articulate, and B, he's a black man in a restaurant. And you just heard what he said about Cracker Barrel. Uh, this is all new material. I think you guys should listen to me. Uh, you guys want to get on with the show? Do you want me to get off the stage? Just applaud. Just applaud. Yeah! All right. This is her first time performing at the hotspot. I'd like to give. I'd like you guys to give a warm welcome to Allison Blair. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not leaving my beer at the table. That's coming with me. I need that tonight. Um, yeah, hi guys, I'm Allison Blair, and if you know the X-Men I am named after, you are just as big a dork as I am, so good for you. Yeah, um, I'm kind of bummed out, though. I was meant to get here earlier so I could, like, play a round or two of pool. I don't know about you, but I fucking love pool. Um, I'm not good at it. At all. Um, <clears throat> in fact, every time, you know, every time I play it, I have to act like it's my first time. And I mean, I don't hustle people, like I said, I'm just really bad at pool. And in case you're wondering, um, that whole uh, excuse does also work for sex. So, it's good. I'm glad you guys laughed. Thank you. No, no, I'm not, I'm not funny. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I'm not funny. I just have really bad luck, so I like to make other people feel a little better by comparison. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying, you know, my life sucks by any means. For fuck's sake, I live in Charlottesville. I mean, it's not Guam or, or Siberia or Syria even. Words are hard, or, you know, Norfolk. Um, yeah, no. I lived in the, uh, the 757 for a while. Anybody yeah. One person! Yeah, no, I went to Christopher Newport. Um, my, uh, my idea was I'd go get a degree, you know, end up being like a screenwriter for, you know, have some awesome show on NBC. I do now pick up dog shit for a living. <laughs> so that came in real handy, right? <laughs> no, I love my job. I, um, I work for the SPCA over in Charlottesville. Um, yeah, cats, no, it's, I, I like, I like cats better than people, which may or may not mean I'll die alone, but, you know, whatever. Uh, big deal. Uh, um, <clears throat> but no, I work for the SPCA, which is nice, because when I'm trying to impress people, I just go, oh, yes, I work for a local nonprofit full-time. Also, yes, that is what it says on my online dating profile, so... Now, I'm trying a new method of dating that my friend started recommending to me. You may have heard of it. It's called having standards. <laughs> but apparently it's, it's too much to ask for a man ages 30 to 35 with a job, a car, and a home. So, winning that one. Um, I, 
I do date older men, um, and it's not so much that I have daddy issues, it's just I grew up with a really, really strong feeling of contempt towards my peers. So, now my, my last ex was 19 years older than me, and I did not know this when we, we got set up, so I had no idea. And when I found out, I was just like, ew, you're, you're old enough to be my dad. To which he responded with, nah, I've done the math. I'm old enough to be your uncle. <laughs> so, speaking of family, I, I recently inherited my mom's iPhone, which would be really awesome if I knew how the fuck to work an iPhone. Um, I'm, I'm not good with technology. My grandmother can work an iPhone. Uh, she can navigate it smoother than I can. And she's been dead for like eight years. So, <laughs> no, I, um, I recently became uh, the proud mother of my third cat. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 yeah, I adopted the first two, and I had been living with the guy for a couple of years. It seemed like a stable point in my life, uh, which I, I love this. Uh, my mom, when we split up, demanded that uh, I get him to pay child support for the cats. <laughs> which, granted, I would love to see, you know, cat support written on the memo line of a personal check. Uh, but otherwise, I did find that to be a fairly unreasonable request. Oh. Um, sorry, I'm thinking about my lack of money now that I brought up checks. <laughs> Zoned out for a minute now. You're, I'm in a weird place in my life. You, you kind of have to set yourself down and have a little heart-to-heart -heart when you find an empty Alphoids container while cleaning, and you go, oh my god, is there weed in this? <laughs> You know what I'm talking about. Uh, no, just kidding. I'm too poor for substance abuse. <laughs> no, I'm really disorganized though. Um, I keep like all of my makeup in my purse uh, because when you're me, you never know when or where you're waking up and how much you've been crying. <laughs> so yeah, I'm very disorganized. I actually had my purse stolen from me on Halloween. A uh, little bit, little bit Swedish wasted. Um, but yeah. No makeup, which is why I look like Cindy Lauper and Skrillex had the worst baby ever. Um, uh, <clears throat> but no, I, I am proud to say I've recently gotten my drinking much more under control. Um, I don't drink excessively in public anymore. Uh, I drink excessively in the privacy of my own home alone with my cats. So, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I do spend what little money I have left over on booze. Um, <sighs> It's, I mean, it's the only investment you can, you can really make that helps you forget about how fucking poor you are. Um, and, you know, I was, I was at the grocery store the other day getting my weekly wine supply, and the, the lady asked me, you know, would you like cash back? And I had to laugh at her. I was like, you're adorable. <laughs> I think I have money left over after this. Honey, if I had any money left, I would not be drinking the $3 wine. So, thank you, bud. Yeah, you know. No, I'm at that shitty level of poor where I make too much money to be on any benefits, any EBT, but I can't afford to feed myself. Uh, on the plus side, I'm losing weight, and I have to say there's nothing as exhilarating as uh, finding a shirt, you know, fitting into a shirt that you thought was way too small for you. And there's nothing quite as awkward as fitting into a shirt you thought was way too small for you, getting to work and realizing you're wearing a shirt that is way too small for you. Uh, yeah, no, you know, they say you are what you eat, which is total bullshit, because cannibalism is not that predominant in today's society. And for real. And, and, you know, I went to a party the other night, and the host was being super, super awesome or whatever, and made a vegan seven-layer bean dip for the one vegan attendee. And, I'm sorry, okay, you can be vegan. That's fine. You can be late for a party. Things come up. You cannot be vegan and late to a party and expect that my drunk ass hasn't poured cheese sauce all over your vegan dip. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, there's all these different like diets going on. There's a vegetarian, there's vegan, there's pescatarian. I just group them all into the category of douchebag. Yeah. All right. Woo! Thank you guys very much. I'm going to go and drink more beer. Holy wow! <laughs> Guys, I...
I know how hard it is to do this after not having performed in two weeks. In her email to me, she said she hadn't performed in four years. So give it up again for Allison. Um, I'm a little what? Oh. You just took away all of your funny cred. Uh, I'm just kidding. All right, uh, I'm, I'm a little worried you guys think I I'm, might be homophobic because of the gay comments earlier. I wanted to be clear, I'm on the side of the gays. Like, I'm so open-minded that occasionally when I need to jerk off, I'll open up gay porn and just zoom in on the asshole and jerk off to that. I mean, there's gotta be some woman out there with an ass that hairy, right? <laughs> I'm sorry, horrible. You guys ready for your next comic? Put your hands together for the great Loris Jarvis Jr. I am uh, 35 years old, I'm employed, and I have my own house. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm married though. Um, anyhow, uh, I uh, want to start things out on a kind of happy note tonight. I've uh, been thinking a lot about death lately. Uh, uh, I, I, I think about my own funeral and how I want it to be. And uh, I want it to be, it's kind of a tradition in my family to throw an Irish wake, which is where everybody just gets together at a bar. And in my mind, everybody's, all my whole family and friends, everybody's just gonna get together and get drunk and reminisce and tell stories until they all realize that they all fucking hated me. <laughs> and then it's a, it's a therapeutic thing, because the next day they wake up and they're like, fuck, he's gone, all right, we're okay. Um, Oh, shit. I'm seeing the wrong page. Um, I'm nervous tonight. This is my first time being nervous doing comedy. I don't know if any of you have seen me before, but I've never been nervous before. Uh, public service announcement, by the way. There's a hole in the wall back there. It is, it's not a glory hole. It just, uh, just scrapes, scrapes your dick when you put it in there. Um, you, uh... You ever sit down uh, to do your finances and work out your budget and you realize that the only possible way to catch up on your bills is to die? Um, and uh, I, I don't take this the wrong way. I, don't, I told that to my therapist today and she was like, well, have you ever had thoughts of suicide? I'm like, of course I've had thoughts of suicide, but never of me committing suicide. I just can't, like, I'm, I don't believe in an afterlife, so therefore that this is it for me, so I, you know, no matter how bad life gets, I'm not gonna end the only life I think I have. It's just crazy. But, uh, um, I do worry about, like, uh, if my wife and I were to die in an accident or something, I, I don't worry so much about what would happen to my daughter, because I know she'd be well taken care of. I just worry about like, who is gonna find my porn collection? Um, and I mean, I realize that pretty much everybody has a porn collection, so it's, it's not that crazy, but, um, you know, I guess compared to most, mine, uh, mine is pretty minors. <laughs> All right, I'm glad some people got that. All right, good. Uh, um, I do, I do want to start a business, though, uh, where I, I go around to people, I, you know, I make contracts with people, and if they die, I go around to their house, and they tell me where all their dirty stuff is, and I clean it up so their families don't know about it. And uh, it wouldn't even cost them any money, because I could make enough of that money back selling used sex toys to, like, Rosie and Tom, or, yeah, or, or whoever. So, yeah, it would be a good time. Um, 
you know, whenever somebody close to you dies, it uh, kind of makes you reflect on your own life. And uh, like personally, I think about all uh, my achievements that I've had in life. Like I think, okay, well, I graduated college, I got married, I had a baby, and then I'm like, well, having a baby, I didn't really like that's not really an achievement for me. I didn't I didn't deliver the baby. I wasn't even in the room when the baby was conceived. Uh. Um, I, I can explain. Uh, my, we had a gestational surrogate carry our baby for us, which is really cool. She was an amazing woman. Uh, she's in the audience tonight. Give her a round of applause. She's not in this audience. She's at the zoo. So she's watching a movie. But it'll be nice to know. She'll, she'll enjoy the fact that she got a round of applause. Um, but yeah, like even even that wasn't that much of an accomplishment for me because all I had to do to create her was to masturbate into a cup, and that's really like only a little bit harder than masturbating into thin air. Like it's <laughs> and that's really easy for me. Um, it uh, I don't even know. Oh, jokes. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, Yeah, it, the whole surrogacy thing is pretty cool, though. It, it makes for some interesting conversations. Uh, but what I really worry about is when my daughter's old enough to say, you know, hey, mommy, daddy, where did I come from? It's like, okay, well, when a mommy and a daddy love each other very much, the daddy um, shoots his sperm into a cup, and the mommy takes hormones that make her crazy. And then the doctor pulls those whore, or, or not the whore, the, uh, the eggs out uh, with a needle and, and puts them and mixes them together in jelly, and they become a little baby Gracie, and they stick that baby into a stranger's belly, and you stay there for nine months, and she poops you out of her pee hole. And then the lawyers give you to us. I, I, I think it'll, you know, that'll clear things up for her. Um, <laughs> I, I, uh, I find there's an interesting correlation between the amount of awareness that I have of the results of unprotected sex and the amount of attraction I have to post-menopausal women. <laughs> um, <laughs> Alright, you ever go to the drive-thru and you order so much food and you feel like such a fat ass that you order extra drinks to make the person taking your order think that you're not uh, like some crazy person? And then you just like make up stuff like uh, like, oh, well, what kind of sauce do you want? Oh, I don't know what kind they want. I get to put them all in there. They probably like a bunch of different ones. <laughs> um, so I, uh, I started to get really bothered the other day about the apathy that exists in the world towards, um, like, all the wars that are going on, all the killing. Uh, but then I thought to myself, who cares? Yeah. <laughs> um, do you think when a dairy cow is uh, terrified, it lets out a milk-curdling scream? <laughs> um, I, you know, just to touch on the homosexuality, the homosexual marriage bit here, um, I personally was uh, adamantly against gay marriage, and I campaigned against it. Like, not for any moral or religious reasons, I just, I work with a gay guy, and he is better than me at everything. <laughs> and, uh, it was like all I had on him. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, I'd be like, oh, hey, Danny, uh, how's your, uh, how's your husband doing? Oh, that's right! You can't get married, because you're subhuman. So, <laughs> so now he can get married, so he's better than me at that, too. Um... Hmm, let's see what else I have here. Uh, I think that might be it. Wait, no. I've got one more. It's not really a good closer, but whatever. You guys remember a couple of years ago the song Crazy Bitch? Um, yeah, yeah, w women went nuts in the uh, 
in the clubs. When this song came on, they were like, yeah, I'm a, cra I'm a crazy bitch. I'm gonna, I fuck so good. I'm a crazy bitch. But none of them really were. And, and if you, I tried to buy one of them a beer, and I'm like, hey, you look like a crazy bitch. Um, <laughs> but she didn't, she didn't like it. So, uh, I, but I, I actually, that song made me write my own song recently. Um, and it goes, uh, hey, you're a relatively mentally stable woman. And when we make love, you basically just lay there um, on your back and don't move a lot. Uh, but when I dream of doing you all night, um, generally it doesn't end in a domestic dispute that gets me arrested. Uh, so keep it right on. All right. Thank you, everybody. Keep it going for Loris Jarvis Jr. Man, even the person who hadn't performed in four years is doing better than me tonight. <laughs> the next performer laughed at that the most. Uh, so, how many of you guys are participating in No Shade of November? Yeah, right? It's a nice excuse. Do, you, do any of you know how it originated? I, I remember it as last year. It might have been before that, but last year was the year that like Twitter, Facebook, everywhere, you were just seeing No Shave November. The guy who started No Shave November, it was a charity. It was for a charity. That's why we're not shaving. But nobody wants to think about that. We heard the title and didn't do any Googling whatsoever. I don't know how not shaving contributes to anyone who's not as privileged as I am getting money, but I at least maintain for the next 25 days that I'm doing something for people. Uh, but yeah, only $600 last year. Think of how many people all across America didn't shave for 30 days. The guy made $600 for his charity. I looked on his website, he said, we're hoping to raise 1200 this year. Oh. Yet here I am, not shaving and not giving any money. <laughs> and, and as Americans, I can only imagine this will build. Like, we never like things just as they are. Like, everybody in charge is like, they liked this, let's up the amp ante. So, what are the three S's? Shave, shower, and shit, right? So, the next year or a few years from now, it'll be no shave, no shower, November. Just, I mean, it's basically just an excuse to stop hygiene for 30 days, right? <laughs> Let's go all out. And then a few years later, it's no shave, no shower, no shit, November. Which, I mean, you could take as, like, don't give anybody any shit, be really nice. It's a charitable action, but I like, it's funnier to me to just imagine people, guys, who don't want to shave or shower walking around for 30 days just holding, not going to the bathroom, like, this is for charity! <laughs> Thanks for listening to me, you guys. You guys having fun? Despite me? No. That was... It started as an okay response. Went downhill. What can I do for you, Ian? More no shame, more soapboxing. <laughs> yeah! I... More Obama jokes. <laughs> I'm getting heckled by a comedian. <laughs> and, I, and I love it. <laughs> kind of. It's the sad part is, as soon as he said that, something fired in my brain like, you have something. I'm not going to do it to you. Ladies and gentlemen, Rosie. Hello, friends. I don't know why he puts this in the middle, but I always fucking move it. It's like he's trying to be a pain in the ass. Um, so, it's funny that you mentioned No Shave November, Kenneth, because my No Shave November lasts all year. <laughs> my husband is lucky if I shave, like, once every six months. My legs, just my legs. I'm not even talking about my vagina. Um, Speaking of vagina, election day was yesterday. <laughs> and my husband and I were talking about, um, we didn't, we, this is the irony. We both have political conversations, yet neither one of us voted yesterday. <gasps> right. <laughs> yeah, shining responsible adults. Um, but anyway, we were talking about politicians in the car on the way over here. 
And he was like, man, fucking George Bush. Did you know that there's another George Bush? I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? And he's like, yeah, man, in Florida, like, Jeb Bush's son, like, just got elected to some, like, some bullshit financial thing. They're, he was just getting elected just so he could start off his political campaign. Can you imagine if there's another George Bush in, like, in uh, the office, the White House? I was like, oh man, that would be really shitty. And he's like, yeah, man, I fucking hate George Bush. I hate the Bushes. And I was like, you don't hate all Bushes, right? <laughs> and he's like, baby, you don't have a Bush, you have a shrubbery. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so on to the real jokes. Um, we're winding down to the end of the year. It's November. We have three, like, we just did the first of the three main holidays at the end of the year. Um, the next two, of course, are uh, Fat Day and Presence Day. And um, <laughs> I take this time during this part of the year, I reflect on the trends that we've seen all year. And something that's really stood out to me that I'm actually pretty proud of is that it seems like this year there's been a, like, a really big push for feminism, at least in my eyes. But with this push for feminism, there's also been like a pushback. And I seem to remember the pushback a little bit more than the push forward. I'm talking about, uh, well, more, most recently there was Gamergate, if anybody, I don't, I don't even know what that is. I, all I know is that, that it's anti-feminist in some way. Um, <laughs> go me! Um, there's also that hashtag not all men, which was a response to all women have to consider being afraid to walk down the street in the dark of night. Well, not all women, men are rapists. Yeah, okay. Um, and that's, that's sort of like the, the, I guess the big pushback group this year has been um, men's rights group. Whatever that means. I feel like, whatever, it's fine. <laughs> you have rights, okay, whatever. We'll, we'll recognize them. And I think that uh, there is this men's right pushback because when you say things like, I'm a feminist, it feels like there's two sides to things. Like, women are trying to take over instead of just be a part of something. And I, that kind of bothers me, and I wish that I could just tell anybody that was part of the men's rights groups to just, like, every time you hear anybody say feminist, just, just cover your ears and just think equal, equalist. Just equalist, that's all they mean, that's all they mean. Because really that's, I, I feel like when I'm talking about my own feminists leanings, that's really what I'm meaning. I'm just trying to talk about how I feel like I should be an equal. Um, and not all people, I guess, look at men and women as equals. I mean, you hear all the time, like, men, men, all men, like, pick their nose and eat it, or all women just whine about their periods all the time, and like, putting people in these groups. And I, I think that's really hard, for me at least, because I feel like I'm like both men and women. And actually I feel like both men and women are equal. If you need proof of this, um, well, let me just give you an example. Everybody has been in the position of getting caught staring at somebody they should not be staring at. Whether they're interested in them sexually or not you'll get caught and it'll be awkward. The best way that I can like sort of talk about how we're the same is that all men and women have the same response to this. What are you looking at? Men and women both say that. What's different is how we're programmed to go on after that. If you're a woman, you're sort of taught to diffuse the situation by complimenting somebody. And a woman is kind of taught to compliment um, their body, like another woman's body. Like if a woman like gets caught staring at another woman and they're like in that awkward position, they're like, oh my god, what do I do? I'll just compliment their body and it'll be okay. Um, an example of this is like if you're at a bar and uh, you get caught, I would just go up to the woman and be like, Oh my god, I'm sorry. I know I was so awkward that I was staring. I just couldn't help noticing your abs, and I'm looking for a new gym. 
what gym do you go to? But that's where the inequality happens. I mean, can you imagine if a man said that to another man? <laughs> I'm sorry, honey. I was just noticing your abs, and I've been looking for another gym. What gym do you go to? Yeah, I think it would be an awkward sort of situation. But it's different with men. Like, men are taught to diffuse the situation in a different way. If a man gets caught staring at another man, they're taught to compliment a material that the other man has. A man would walk up to the bar and say, Oh man, you know, I'm sorry I got caught staring. I wasn't trying to be weird or anything. I just noticed that, that you had a, a Harley Davidson belt buckle. What do you ride? Can you imagine if a woman said that? Hey, baby. I just uh, noticed that you were wearing a Harley Davidson bell buckle. What do you run? <laughs> it's different. We're taught to respond differently to each other. Um, of course, it's, I'm talking about being the one caught. I've been the person on the other side of that also. I've been the one that's catching somebody else looking at me. And that's also an awkward like position to be in. In my case, most often than not, it's a guy looking at me, and they're less subtle. Um, I've had all sorts of different t types of people to respond in different types of ways. Um, a lot of the times the most common thing is just for guys to stare at you. And I was recently talking to one of my coworkers, and I was like, man, I was just trying to buy some store supplies fucking some like cake mix at the store and this guy was just staring at me and my uh, co-worker was like if anybody ever does that to me I just stare back if a woman does that it's taken as a flirtation it doesn't matter if you're like or if you're smiling if, like, if you're making eye contact with the guy he's in <laughs> it does not matter so I decided that I was going to come up, to, come up with a solution to this problem and come up with some other signal to that guy other than just staring him down to make him know that I was not interested in him. Let me know if you uh, think that this works. <laughs> Can you imagine? That guy would be like, oh my god! What the fuck? I also get a lot of people that are like, like I'll be try I'll try to be polite to people. Just general politeness. At the, at the grocery or at the convenience store the other day, I was just trying to get a pack of sm cigarettes. And uh, there was this guy ahead of me that had like a couple, only like two items, and I was like trying to grab milk and stuff like that along with my smokes, and I knew that I was going to be a pain in the ass, so I was just like, go ahead. And he looks at me, and he's like, go ahead, baby. <sighs> I hate that. I hate being called baby. The only person that I want to, want to call me baby is somebody actively fucking me, or an adorable black woman. <laughs> that is the only person. Two people. <laughs> So again, I thought of a unique way of dealing with that situation. And the next time somebody's like, hey baby, how are you doing? I'm gonna be like, oh, daddy? <laughs> oh my god! You love, mom and I have been looking for you for five years, but oh my god, you're back! Can you, oh my god, he'd be so freaked out! He'd be like, I am never making eye contact with another woman. Um, <laughs> I also, this is something that's not really typical of most women, but I have to deal with it all the time. I don't know if you've noticed, but I don't wear a bra. Don't give a fuck. It's painful. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> um, so a lot of guys are like, oh, if she doesn't wear a bra, she must want her tits stared at. And to that, I'm just like, okay, I get it. You're not used to seeing, seeing tits every day. That's cool. Take a glance. But there are those people that are like standing behind poles trying to be slick and they're like I'm like I see you. Like I have eyes. <laughs> I know that you're looking at me. Um, and so my strategy for dealing with this next time um, is just to be like <laughs> You thirsty? <laughs> Yeah.
Yep. <laughs> um, now, a lot of you may say that's sexist, Rosie. You're just talking about guys looking at you. And to that, I say, you're right. You know what? You're right. I do have a strategy for if a woman, if I catch a woman staring at me. The next time I see a woman stare at me, I'm going to be like, you know what, baby? I ride a pink bunny rabbit at home. You want to ride? <laughs> That's my set, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Keep it going for Rosie. So Rosie was talking about uh, uh, guys staring at women. Uh, you know, there's. I I'm not discounting anything you said, Rosie. I just think there's a there's a chemical thing when men see a woman that a woman that we just cannot help. So. Uh, God damn it, which joke am I going into? <laughs> which joke am I going into? Hand me that, please. Oh, uh, yeah, thank you. All right, yeah. Just delete the last 15 seconds from your consciousness. Um, when men go up to women and ask them out, that's such... A lot of women blow it off and like make fun of it later with their friends, but... I don't think they understand how much of an act of courage it is. Like, no matter how much uh, uh, mojo they seem to have, it's always an act. Oh, always. But if you're an ugly dude, the women don't react the same. They're just like, their face is of utter disgust. Just, oh. And let me tell you right now, women, you're the people causing pedophilia. Hear me out. If you're an ugly dude and you go your entire life just hoping to have a woman look at you the way you look at her, and the only response you ever get is, then what you're going to do is turn to the only people who are trained to look up to you, to trust you. I know this doesn't sound like a joke. This is a PSA. What I'm saying is <laughs> fight pedophilia. Fuck an ugly dude. <laughs> Guys, keep it going for our next comic. Ian Oldman. Thanks for that setup, Ken. It's easy to follow a pedophile joke. So it's good. Uh, I, uh, well, I'll do one more No Shave November joke. Uh, I don't participate in No Shave November um, because if I did, I would never be able to wipe my asshole. That's a joke pertaining to the fact that my asshole grows hair like a blueberry bush. <laughs> Uh, I used to open. I used to host a uh, open mic in Harrisonburg, and our venue got shut down. And uh, now I'm looking for a new venue, and uh, one of the places I'm considering is the Arful Dodger. Have any of you guys ever been there in Harrisonburg? Yeah. yeah. It's got a reputation as a gay bar. I think that's a little overblown. I think there's more gay people in a Walmart at any given point in time than the Arful Dodger. I was telling my friend about this. I was like, I want to do a show at the Arful Dodger. But the gay bar? Pfft. I thought that was really mean and insensitive. Considering I was sucking his dick at the time, I was like, yeah, man, I'm right here. I'm right here. That's not really cool. Let's see if we got jokes here. Oh, look at that. Well, that's a fun one. You guys will enjoy this one. Uh, I've noticed a trend. I went to grocery shopping the other day. I noticed a trend of uh, chain restaurants um, like selling their goods. At stories, you have to go into a restaurant, which I think is a bad uh, business strategy. Billy really Guy started handing around business cards every year. It's like, you know, next time you need a joke, just hit me up. I'll give you a joke. Whether it's at like a family gathering or an executive corporate meeting, probably don't have like a good joke for that setting. It may be a little bit inappropriate. But next time you need a joke, just hit me up. I'll give it to you for free, completely free. It's like that's not gonna make me money at all. I mean, this doesn't make me money <laughs> yet. Uh, <clears throat> But uh, I saw one, it's like uh, the Taco Bell taco dinner meal. 
for the life of me, I couldn't find the fourth meal di uh, dinner. Uh, all right, that was a good one. Make sure, <laughs> make sure I keep telling you that one. But uh, the best one I thought was the uh, I saw Hooters wing sauce. I was like, thank God, I never have to go into Hooters again. That's the only attraction going to Hooters. There's no other gimmick to get me into Hooters other than the wing sauce. It's good to know I don't have to go back there. Fucking awesome. <laughs> I've been getting over a cold recently. As soon as I hear a cold, it's cold season. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for agreeing with me, stranger. Uh, have you ever, like, sneezed so hard you cure yourself of a cold? It's like, Pugh! whoa, okay, a brand new ball game. <laughs> See you later, Nyquil. I'm just kidding. You know, I'm just kidding back here, Nyquil. You and I are going to a Flaming Lips concert tonight. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. <laughs> Related to that, have you ever come so hard that it cures your syphilis? <laughs> Neither have I, so ladies, if you wanna get back to me on that one. Every guy that wants, at some point in his life, a woman to beg for his cum, right? She's on her knees, looking up at you, she's got her dentures in her Hannah Montana wig on. <laughs> Never really turns out the way you want it to, though. It's never like in porn, so it's like, come on, would you fucking come already? Come on! I've got a PDA meeting to make it to. Let's get a move on here. Traffic is backing up. I hate that my phone knows how fat I am. I, uh... I, uh, after one night, I had a one night stand with a chick, which I know is hard to believe <laughs> with the uh, lead into that joke, but occasionally I can lie my way to a blowjob. This was nice. But, uh, I had a one night stand with this chick. She was actually pretty nice. I liked her. So I texted her the next day. I was like, hey, baby, <laughs> you really messed up my sheets last night, which I nailed it with that text, by the way. I was like, yeah, this is a, way, a good way to get a chick back. <laughs> she, she probably read that. She's like, oh, yeah. I want to suck on his drunk dick again after that text. But my phone autocorrected it and was like, Did you mean to spell sheets S H E E T Z? No. Like, why did I text that? And I know I'm, I'm self aware enough to know that I didn't text that. I was hitting up a friend, like, Hey man, I'll be here to play soon. I gotta go uh, stop at sheets for gas first. No, I know it's probably like, me text my therapist, be like, I fucking saw on Facebook that my ex posted an emoticon that said feeling happy, and that fucking pisses me off. I don't want my bitch ex to be happy. I can't. I don't understand human beings and their motivations and their actions. I'm feeling lost and confused in this world. Fuck it. I'm gonna binge at sheets <laughs> on schmappetizer shamblers, also with a Z at the end. <laughs> I guess it's a good way to figure out how I type sheets is to type in samplers on my phone and see if there's a, a Z on the end of it. I know I keep switching between Z and Z. I guess that that's what happens to a, a guy raised in America with a bleeding heart liberal Canadian mother. She's like, no, you spell color with a U. Same thing with Harbor. I, uh, I was on Yoohoo. Not Yoohoo. <laughs> It's a chocolate drink. <laughs> I was on Yahoo, which is a website, not a chocolate drink, though they may be easily confused. I was on Yahoo the other day. You might have seen this story. It was a woman who, uh, she killed herself in Oregon. She was terminally ill. She was a perm yeah, she was a perm uh, assisted suicide. It's a heavy story. She was terminally ill, didn't want to deal with the pain, that the, uh, the treatment went through, so she killed herself. Heavy story, complicated. National issue, very important. Yahoo decided it was a good idea to grab my attention with the headline, Sick Woman Dies. <laughs> I think there's more to that story than you're letting on, Yahoo. <laughs> that shit happens every day. So I went through their website to see if uh, it was a trend, and unfortunately it was. I kept scrolling through the stories, and I saw one. It said, man drops fork. 
open it up. It's about a farmer who was pitching hay out of his loft. The fucking pitchfork fell out of his hand, hit his wife right in the guts, and the fuller below, fucking terrible, her guts was all over the place, she was split in half, and the quote from the farmer was like, it was like my wife's torso was made out of ground chuck beef and crushed grapefruit. Like, fuck. That shit's heavy, Yahoo. I kept scrolling through the site. I saw a piece I thought was a fluff story. It said, dog drives truck. Oh. Open it up into a crowd of people. It's like, oh, oh, fuck. Yeah, somehow this golden retriever got behind the cat and got into a cab of an operating Mack truck, flipped off the e-brake. You know, the thing, unfortunately, it's right by a, a sheet metal plant, rolled down a hill, crushed about a half a dozen dedicated workers whose families loved and depended on them for financial security. This dog blew .09 on the scene. This is a fucking tor terrible tragedy. This universe is chaotic and violent. Does God really exist? I don't know, Yahoo. This is sort of important shit. You can't dilute and headline like that. It seems like a lack of journalistic responsibility on your half. All right, I got one more joke for you tonight. That was a good one. I think you guys will like this one. Especially you. I don't know you, but you look like you like this one. I wrote this joke for you. Um, my high school gave me a uh, animatronic baby doll. All right, let me back up and explain that one. My high school uh, sex ed class was pretty fucking backwards. I don't know what kind of high school you guys went to, but my high school sex ed class was pretty much like, uh, there's two consequences that came out of sex, or either you got pregnant, or you got an STD, which I was cool with. The second one, as a horny 16-year-old, I was like, the vagina's full of smallpox? All right, that's tight, I can nail that shit. I don't have a problem with that. I can fucking, I'm, they'll find something to cure that shit eventually. I'm cool with that. But, uh, it seemed like, I don't know, and the other thing was, uh, my PE teachers taught that class. That seems like, like, sexual health and contraception, pregnancy risk. It seems like a lot of responsibility to hand to people who think that teaching kids how to play badminton is a legitimate career path, right? Yeah. It's like, it's like they're walking around in college, it's like, what do you want to do? It's like, oh, I want to teach kids, I want to get kids healthy, you know, I want to get them to run around, you know, teach them how to do a layup, throw the perfect spiral, show them, you know, where the fallopian tubes are, you know, I want to get them, you know, serve a perfect ace in there, you know, show them what the advanced difference is, you know, P.E. shit. Yeah. Seems like a lot of responsibility for those people. They did not do a good job with it either. Me and my teachers were like flipping the page. Like, that makes sense. That makes sense now. That's how I had my child. Not black magic. As I had previously believed. Um, but yeah, so we had, they gave us, at the end of the, the, the year, they gave us these like electric baby dolls that cried. That's all they did was cry. And I didn't think it was a very accurate portrayal of uh, like taking care of a baby because the 16 year olds I took them home with didn't like take selfies with the baby and put it on Instagram with like a glitter tag. It's like, it's a wonderful life. Like, bitch, I know you don't have a wonderful life. I just saw yesterday you like put a picture of you pouring frozen peas into a thing of ramen and it says like ghetto life. And it's like, bitch, I know you don't have a ghetto life because the day before, I saw you posted a picture of you fucking a deer that you just shot, and it's like, hashtag country life. It's like, pick one life. You only get one life, you don't get a country life, you get a life, and a wonderful life, you get fucking one life. Yeah! Woo! But I took this thing home, and I was just crying all the time. All you had to do to get it to stop crying was that you had this key on your wrist, and you had to jab it in the back. You had to stab it in this keyhole in the baby's back, and turn it, until it stopped crying, which I don't know how your childhoods were, but for me that was hauntingly accurate. <laughs> but I've never, I've never had a baby. I don't have a kid. I have had pregnancy scares though. <coughs> pregnancy scares are fucked up. Pregnancy scares are so fucked up that you're excited about your girlfriend's period. That's not like that's not typically a thing you're looking forward to. You know, your girlfriend's like, oh, I'm on my period. You're like, all right, I gotta up my filter. I gotta be, like, sensitive about her needs and desires. I gotta watch what I say and do around her. 
I gotta queue up like some A plus porn vids on my phone because I can't go into the bathroom and be shitting for 45 minutes. She's gonna catch on to that shit, all right? She's gonna catch on. She's gonna know what you're doing in there. You're never gonna hear the end of it. All right, you need to go in, get out, spurt, all right? Get back to pretending that you like the Barefoot Contessa. This is her week. It's a very heavy week for her. <laughs> but when, after a pregnancy scare, they're called scares for a reason. It's not a pregnancy startle. Yeah. Yeah. After a pregnancy scare, she's like, oh, baby, I'm on my period. Thank God. Woo. All right, baby, tabs on me tonight. We're going out. We're getting shots. I'm going to buy you a carton of cigarettes, a bottle of red wine, an eight ball. You're getting an eight ball, baby. We're doing a bunch of shit. I don't know what pregnant women can do. I don't know. I've never had a pregnant girlfriend before. But it's like, oh, I'm sure it's six flags. Is that an equation? I think even simple pleasures like rolling down hills, I imagine, is probably out of the equation. No more rolling down hills. We're doing all that shit tonight, baby. <laughs> After that, though, so she wasn't pregnant. Pregnancy scare. And, uh, but afterwards, it's like, all right, we need to talk about this. We weren't prepared. We need to talk about what happens if it actually, if you actually are pregnant. It's a big deal. She don't want to talk about it. She's uncomfortable. She's uncomfortable after talking about abortion and adoption, which I understand. It's uncomfortable. But it's an important thing to talk about with your spouse. She didn't want to talk about it. We actually never got around to talking about it. So, like, listen, woman, we need to talk about this. We need to communicate better. Because if you get pregnant, you're going to be very unpleasantly surprised when I push you down a set of stairs from behind. <laughs> and that relationship did not last too long. All right, thank you very much, Tipper Bartender, everyone. Guys, I, I hate to give you shit, but you gave him a pretty shitty intro, so let's give him a really big outro. You know, hold on. So, I was, I was never really good at goodbyes, which made me really thankful that my birth father never said it. Um, so, at the end of the show, we're going to be doing some improv games. Yeah, I know. I'm excited. Um, we're going to be playing Hashtag Wars. It's a game from At Midnight, and then we're going to close the show with Set List. If you guys don't know Set List, it is where comedians just hear a topic and just off the top of their head try to make it funny. I give them 90 seconds to do some stand-up on the topic, and we see if it works. It's a really good exercise for the comics, and it occasionally gets to be really, really funny. So, what I need from you guys... I used to put note cards everywhere, but everybody just gave up on those. So I'm pretty much just going to sit here and I, until I get enough suggestions for set list, and then the next comic will come on. So, guys, what would you like to hear comedians talk about at the end of the show, just in general? Liquors and whores. Gary Oldman. Disney songs going on. Uh, that sounds like hashtag wars. Mangianas. What? Let's go with manginas. Yeah. Manginas. Yeah. Yes. All right, I'm, I'm going to need at least uh, 15 subjects, so just anything you can think of, a general subject. Ebola! Ebola, I heard. Anyone else? Cigarettes and dope. Cigarettes slash dope. <laughs> no, that's two topics. It's, they're both awesome. I'm in charge. Yeah, that's true. What's up? Zombie sex. Zombie sex. Getting lost in a Korean Walmart. All right. <laughs> Guys, these sound like improv scenes. These are general topics for stand-ups. These do not have prepared material on this. Let's say, let's say Walmart, and let's say Korea. All right? Not getting lost in a Korean Walmart. That's very specific. Go with unexpected butt sex. Uh, I'll say butt sex. We're not creating a scene, we're coming up with topics. Target. Target. See, very good. It's the same Bojangles. What's up? Bojangles. Bojangles. I've never been there. Do you got, does everyone else know what Bojangles is? All right, I'm writing it down. All right, that's good. Anyone else? Awkward cell phones. Awkward cell phones. Awkward cell phones. All right, I'll put, I'll put, uh, 
cell phone awkwardness. Interconnectivity so. and the decline of modern society. <laughs> I will put the decline of modern society. That's, that's actually pretty broad given everything that's happening. Oh, she's a pink rabbit. <laughs> that one goes to Tom. You know what? I know that was a joke suggestion, but I'm totally gonna write down airline food. <laughs> Rosie's tits. God tits. bless whatever comedian gets that. Rosie's tits. <laughs> Says Rosie. <laughs> All right. Either Brooks or Rosie is getting Rosie's tits. That should be enough. All right. Are you guys ready for your next comic? <laughs> Thank you for those suggestions. All right, everybody, keep it going. I mean, it's not going, but let's get it going. Now, keep it going for our own Trevor Stewart. You know, it's, it's really good to be here. And I know I say that every time I get on stage, but this time it is really good to be here. I just got done with a, a two-week state-sponsored vacation. Um, I did about 16 days of a 15-day sentence. That's some real Orange County math for you. And I got pulled over in Palmyra for uh, DWB, driving while black. Um, they, the, the cop walks up to my car and goes, ah, I smell marijuana. Can I search your car? I said, no. So it doesn't matter, I'm gonna anyway. Uh, now, let me tell y'all a little something about Palmyra, Virginia. They have one stop sign, two cops, and one cruiser. And all of a sudden, it turned into five cops, six cruisers, and a whole pack of canine units. They had drug sniffing dogs, they had bomb sniffing dogs, they had body sniffing dogs. This must have been the biggest drug bust they'd seen in a long time. It, it, was, uh, it was disturbing to me. They, they pulled me out of the car, uh, they made me, you know, try to walk a straight line, say my ABCs backwards, tap dance T for two. <laughs> I can't do this at the best of times, but apparently when I'm stoned, I'm all America's Got Talent and stuff. <clears throat> I uh, amazingly passed all of the sobriety checks, and uh, the cop looks at me and goes, well, I'm gonna charge you with reckless driving which I couldn't contest, I hadn't gotten into a wreck. Reckless driving. <clears throat> As they were looking through my car, tearing it apart, looking for that little bit of dope I had, little bit, they found a, a cute little dagger that I'd forgotten I had, and forgotten it had fallen into the floorboard, and started talking about, oh, we've got a concealed weapon. Concealed weapon? I, weapon? What, what makes you say that? Oh, it's sharp and pointy. You could hurt us with it. You guys carry mace, tasers. You guys carry guns. What am I going to do with a three-inch blade? Of course, these are the same kind of guys who think that this is six inches. That must have looked like a freaking sword to them. Uh, it took it took the judicial system a while to get me to get me through this and into court and about a year. They uh, <clears throat> they ended up giving me reservations at this nice little place called uh, Central Virginia Regional Jail in Orange. I, I showed up uh, the Friday after my court, you know, checked in like they asked me to. Apparently, CVRJ had not gotten my reservations. They wouldn't let me in. <laughs> So, and they said, you know, come on back next week. I'm sure we'll have this taken care of. I, I said, okay, I guess. I thought I was getting smart. I called ahead to see if they had my reservations. <laughs> I'm sorry, we are not allowed to give out that kind of information. Really? Really? I showed up the next Friday. They, 
still weren't trying to let me in. I made them check the list twice, and there at the bottom of the list I was. They, they went ahead and brought me in. They, uh, they processed me and classified me and orientated me and you know, all these other verbs that included rubber gloves and smile, squat, and cough. <sighs> uh, as this was going on, uh, one, of the, one of them was looking over my paperwork and says, Oh my, you, you can't do that. Well, of course not. I got arrested for it. <laughs> but what part of this do you mean I, I can't do? They look at me and say, well, you're not allowed to take a gun into a bar. It's a gun in a bar. I had a knife in a car. Who wrote this, Dr. Seuss? <laughs> this is the worst game of Clue ever. <clears throat> so, you know, when you go to jail, people give you a lot of advice. They, the one bit of advice I got, though, was when you get there, there's going to be this, this one big, scary, crazy-looking guy on the block, somebody you don't want to even talk to. I got to the block, and I looked around, and everybody looked pretty normal to me. Looking at me like I'm crazy because I was off my meds. <laughs> you know, you would have thought, a lot of you would have thought that I'd have been happy to be in a room full of mans and that might have done something for me. Because, um, you know, it's not rape if I'm into it. it turns out that I. I don't like straight guys. <laughs> Who knew? Oh, he knew. <laughs> A round of applause for my boyfriend. <laughs> now, I'd like to talk for a moment about the guards in jail, the, the corrections officers, the COs. These are... <sighs> How best to explain it? Um, most of them couldn't pass the physical to get into the police academy. Those that could failed out of the police academy. And I don't mean the school, I mean those awful movies from the 80s. <laughs> I kind of want to call them a bunch of, you know, a-hole bullies. But I don't want to insult a-holes and bullies like that. It's just not fair to them. <laughs> Uh, these guys weren't really even worth the amino acids that their Deliverance County DNA was printed on. <laughs> Paddle faster, I hear banjos. Another fine, fine example of Orange County public schools. Even a cup of yogurt had more culture than these guys. Uh, I'm not saying that I want to go back to jail. I'm not saying that I liked being in jail, but that is the best that I have ever gotten along with a bunch of right-wing, uh, heterosexual Christians. And some of them do still owe me some honey buns and coffee from commissary. <laughs> nice guy, Swallow. I just, uh, I had to get all of that off of my chest. You know, I, I had to talk about that because it, it was kind of upsetting, you know. So uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try and make you all laugh with some actual jokes here. Uh, <clears throat> how do you know that you've had a hippie staying on your couch? He's still there. <laughs> what does a hippie say? What does that hippie say when you ask him to leave? Namaste. <laughs> How do you know he's really, really finally gone? Your house is clean, your bowl is clean, and your daughter's gone. <laughs> wow, this set went a lot quicker than I thought it would. My last joke, uh, my last joke. A cowboy walks into town. It's a 
deserted town. <laughs> Walks into the saloon. Bartender, I'll have a whiskey. Bartender brings him a whiskey. He says, I notice that nobody's around. Where is everybody? Oh, well, they're all off at the hanging. Okay, who are they hanging? His name's Paper Pete. Why do they call him Paper Pete? Because he wears a, a paper hat and a paper shirt, paper pants and paper boots, and rides in a paper saddle. And uh, why is he being hung? For rustling. Thank you. Keep it going for Trevor. Awesome, right? Yeah, he's he's filming this whole thing. All of these are up on the Hotspots YouTube, by the way. AB's YouTube. Um, and my YouTube. And his YouTube. What's YouTube? Let's talk about YouTube. Oh boy. Uh, it is a place where all the insecure go to comment on everything that gives them value. <laughs> um, so, I, I want to talk to you guys for a minute about strip clubs. Because, uh, who, who here likes strip clubs? I, I feel the apprehension in the room. Uh, I don't want to admit that. Uh, okay, yeah, strip clubs from what I gather, can be pretty skeezy, gross places, but I've come up with a way that everyone in here can have fun at a strip club, and this is my gift to you, okay? Apparently, the only rules when you're getting a lap dance for the stripper are that you're allowed to leave if the dude takes his dick out or tries to touch you anywhere that you aren't covered up. Which means that if you pay for 15 minutes, that is 15 minutes of the best tickle fight of your life. <laughs> this is my gift to you. You can go there and tickle them, and according to the rules, they're not allowed to get up and leave, which, I mean, depending on what guy it is, that might be a sick fascination that you might want, not want to give in to, but... Just, just hope and pray that you get a stripper who's ticklish, or else then you have to deal with 15 minutes of boobs in your face. <laughs> Alright, you guys ready for your next comic? We've got four more comics, they're all awesome. Everybody put your hands together for Winston Smith. Oh, shit. Alright, so, uh... I want to try something out here. I want to run a scenario by you and get your own opinion. Let's uh, let's split the room up in half here, like left and right, and uh, let's all pretend that we're in prehistoric times, all right? And the stick has best just been discovered, and you all are from two different families, each side of the room, two different families. And uh, what's your name? Shelton. Shelton. All right. You get in a dispute with what's your name here? Brian. Brian. Shelton and Brian get into a dispute, and you know what, Shelton's like, you know what, I don't have anything else to say. But I do have some shit that I want to get off of my chest, so, wham! And he hits Shelton? Brian. Shelton. Hits Brian. <laughs> I'm terrible. Um, yeah. Hits Brian with the stick. All of a sudden, the stick has a new purpose. At first it was used for who knows what, but now it's used to hit this family because they think it's hilarious. This family thinks it's hilarious that hitting your family with a stick makes you feel bad, makes you feel like shit. So, they, this goes on for years. They're just like constantly hitting you with this stick, and then a couple years go by, and then someone from your family, let's say you, standing next to Brian, or sitting next to Brian? Dean. Dean. Dean decides to shave that stick up, make it look all nice, a little bit smaller than it was, and he turns it into a bat, and he creates baseball. He makes baseball. Now all of a sudden, everyone's like, fuck yeah, baseball's cool as shit. I don't know why this fucked up family over here has been like beating you with sticks the entire time, but that shit's kind of fucked up. Maybe we shouldn't be using the stick for that. So, 
Everyone goes to see your family playing baseball. They love that shit. It's entertaining. You use that stick for all kinds of stuff now. You use it to like play swords for your kids and you know baseball for you and it's just entertaining and you use it for great things and then one day, uh, let's say you here in the glasses. Logan. Logan. Why'd you like, eh, be like, let me think of a name, Logan. <laughs> I don't want to give you my real name. So Logan's like, from this family, he's like, hey, can I use that stick? <laughs> what would your reaction be? Yeah, what? sure, go ahead. Really? <laughs> you would want him to use that stick. His family hates your family. <laughs> no, because I've got the bat. Like, I've got a stockpile of bats. I'm ready. I have the baseball league. I have the... All right. <laughs> That did not go. That did not go the way I wanted it to. Oh, wait, 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 right. hey, Logan. Fuck no, you can't use my stick. Fuck no, he can't use that stick. Okay, sorry. There you go. Good thing you said that. <laughs> because that, ladies and gentlemen, is the reason or the story that I'm going to start telling white people when they ask me why I can say nigger and they can't. <laughs> Because you motherfuckers had to sit for way too long, and you were using it fucking wrong. And the shit's a little fucked up. I don't care how, like, nowadays we're like, what's up, nuku? And they say it with, like, weird letters in it, but that's sti the shit's still not cool, white people. Uh, it's not cool at all. Sorry, but you're not gonna find a way to make it cool. <laughs> we have been, like, creating, like, boundaries for, like, years and years and years. I mean, Boundaries are necessary, but at the same time, they kind of make things confusing depending on what's going on. Like, I mean, I don't know about you, but domestic abuse really confuses the fuck out of me. I don't get it. Like, we crucified Ray Rice. It got really quiet because people were like, what the fuck? <laughs> we crucified Ray Rice for smacking his girlfriend. And he knocked the fuck out of her, too. That was terrible. <laughs> like, I'll admit that. That was indeed terrible. But... Where do you draw the line with this, ladies? You guys are all confusing me because I don't know if anyone has had sex with a woman from this generation, but when it comes to fucking a girl, they like all kinds of crazy shit. They like choking, they like smacking, they like piss sometimes. I don't, I haven't met that girl yet, that lucky lady, but I would like to. Uh, shitting on the chest is not something that's someone made up, that's something that actually happens sometimes. I don't understand it, but I swear to God, like, it just seems like nowadays, like, you can't really smack a girl if you get, like, in a dispute on an elevator, but you know what, you could be like, you know what, let's go upstairs, because I got some shit that I want to get on your chest. <gasps> that's disgusting. I mean, like, and that's, I mean, and that's perfectly normal. You, as long as you're in your bedroom, like, yeah, bitch. Who the fuck you call a bitch? Because... In all honesty, you can piss and shit all you want, but you still can't call a woman a bitch. Like, even with a turd, like, running at her chest. I ain't no fucking bitch. Your mama's a bitch. <laughs> That's just how women are. Like, women just confuse me in general. Like, I don't know where your boundaries are. Like, it's very thin. Like, have you seen this uh, video lately? Ten hours in New York City. Yeah. Yes. Walking around for ten hours in New York City. And she doesn't talk to anyone. And, like, guys are hitting on her constantly. And, like... Harassment, harassment, but I don't know where you draw the line between like compliment and harassment. I saw I saw a comment where someone's like, "Well, what's wrong with saying hello?" And someone's like, "Because she doesn't want it." I don't know like what you want, but I, I thought it was common courtesy when I make eye contact you to be like, "Good morning." Like I thought that was a thing that was cool, but apparently it's not. Like I don't understand that video, and like. If, <laughs> Uh, it kind of made me curious as to how like the two different days went for like the girl and the guy because like there's one scene because like she doesn't talk to anyone and there's one scene the most pathetic scene in the mall like I laughed but like uh, she's just like walking down the street and this guy's like what's up baby and he starts following her and he's like hey hey I think you're pretty why ain't you ain't talking you think I'm ugly am I ugly is that why you ain't talking to me and this goes on apparently for her for like five minutes. And I kind of wonder what happened when both of those people went to their like final destination of that day. Like, like did she go into work and they're like, Erica, what's wrong? She's like, <sighs> someone walked up to me today and said hello. And I had another person ask me how my morning was. Like, it was just fucking brutal. And then like, he goes like back home. And so I was like, Rick, what's wrong? He's like, 
dude, I think I'm fucking butt ugly. Like, I have no idea what's going on. And like, it's very confusing because I, the alternative, to be honest, is like, if you don't pick up on the signals that we want to talk to you, then we're just gonna have to Jesse Matthews the situation. That, oh, that's terrible. Yeah, well, like, here's the thing though, like, Jesse Matthews, like, like, all the evidence is pretty much making him guilty now, like, right? Like, agreed? Like, he's definitely going to jail. Yeah, definitely. So, like, I hope that what ends up happening to him is that they just, they just give him a complete makeover. Because this motherfucker, like, clearly he was not getting the ladies. Like, I hope that they give him a complete makeover. I hope they cut those fucking dirty ass dreads off and give him a nice little perm. And I hope they like give him a manicure and a pedicure and like exfoliate his skin to make it all like smooth and soft. Like, just because like in prison, I really hope that he is the bell of the ball, or the bell at the ball. And by at the ball, I don't mean like that fancy schmancy place where like everyone dance and mingles. I mean like with a dick on his forehead and twelve other like inmates like waiting in line for their turn. <laughs> See, I brought it back around and I was like, oh, just Matthews, that's not cool. I don't want boundaries, motherfuckers. Like, <laughs> that's a weird thing, too, though, because sometimes, like, when you get good laughs, like, oh, man, I get to say other good shit, and then, like, you keep going, and then, like, everyone's like, woo, and then you say some more stuff, and it's like, woo, and then you say something, and you're like, that's fucked up. That's no good at all. <laughs> and, like, there's one time where I was in a freestyle battle because black people all rap. I don't know. <laughs> We all rap. And uh, I was in a freestyle battle and this white guy showed up and because like white people don't all rap, we're like, well, this guy's gonna suck. And he came out there and was like, Hey yo, my name is MC Alphabet. I'm the shit. And if you don't like it, you can suck my dick. And we we're like, oh my God. All the black people were all excited. because like, holy shit, this motherfucker actually rhymes shit with dick. That's very exciting. Yeah. We loved it. And then he was like, a lot of y'all A-list rappers, but that can't be, because I wouldn't put none of you bitches on my CD. I'm going to keep running the rap game till I, till I hit E. And a lot of y'all get Fs when y'all try to be G. And we're like, oh shit, holy fuck, that's why they call me Alphabets, damn, his name is Clever. <laughs> and then like, to top it all off, he was like, yeah. And I'm not even worried, cause I'll be the winner. I'm all that in a bag of chips, salt, and vinegar. And we were like, what the fuck? <laughs> Should we all go outside and get our bats? <laughs> and the white people were like, I think we found a way. <laughs> That's all my time, thank you. Oh my god, he's not even off the stage. Keep it fucking going for Winston Smith. My N-word, Winston Smith. <laughs> See, he can do the important material. All I can do is just make jokes about white stuff. <laughs> like, uh, uh, you guys, you know, Disney releases sequels to like every good movie and ruins them. Like, there is a direct DV direct to DVD sequel to every single Disney movie that you love. Like, there's The Little Mermaid 2, and that one confuses me. That one confuses me because in the first one, she's like singing the song that's just like, What is fire and how does it, what is it, burn? All I can imagine the sequel is, is Prince Eric being like, Ugh, oh, it's fucking fire. I don't know. State uh, science hasn't even been invented yet. But she's like, look, while she's singing that song, she's like in her cove of human stuff. So she's like a hoarder. All I can imagine the sequel to Little Mermaid being is just her going to therapy for not realizing she had a vagina and hoarding. Every single thing she does once she gets up online is like, oh, humans have this, I want this. Oh, humans have this, I want this. Things did not pan out for Prince Eric the way he thought they would. <laughs> you guys ready for your next comic? This guy has been an excellent addition 
since the first show. I say addition. I'm drunk. I'm sorry. This guy is an excellent comic. Everybody put your hands together for my friend Tom Wagoner. My cracko. That's our word. You can't use it. Um, I remember when uh, Disney was releasing movies straight to VHS. Yeah, yeah fuck all of you guys. How many? Do you guys know uh, our our good friend, our comic Paige Campbell, had his birthday here two weeks ago? Are you guys here for that? Don't applaud for that fucker. He turned 18. Who gives a fuck? What's he done? He can buy lottery tickets. Woo! Yeah, good for you. you can buy lottery tickets and contribute to nothing. You go to war and die. That's all you can do. Um, awkward laughs when you don't tell a joke. <laughs> There's some mind reading and shit going on. You, are, you already got the punchline before I said it. That's fucking awesome. Let's try that again. Damn, this shit works. This is crazy. This is crazy scary. So, uh, my wife's been wanting me to quit smoking. And I want to. I know it's not healthy. Don't applaud. Shame on you. Because I honestly think that maybe the tar and nicotine, I know it's bad for me, but it also might be the duct tape that's keeping this shit held together. Right? <laughs> I quit smoking and fall to pieces, literally. Shit. Lost an arm. I think I jerk off both hands. Cool. Um, I wonder if, if, I think the only companies that like to get shitty reviews are the people that make laxatives. I stay up till 4 o'clock in the morning thinking of shit like this. I have a sad, sad, pathetic life. Um, I actually, I actually stay up late playing video games a lot. You guys play video games? Yeah. Hey, yeah. Stones, because he's a kid. I'm not a kid, and I still play video games. And I'm married and have kids that play video games. So it's kind of a weird universe that I live in. And my wife understands, but sometimes when she's like, I'm really tired, I need to go to bed. I'm like, okay, baby, I'll, I'll be right there. No, really, just turn the game off and come to bed. As soon as I beat this boss, I'll, I'll be right up. As soon as I, I'm almost at the end, I've spent like 20 minutes, I can't, I can't start over. I, as soon as I beat this guy, I'll be there, I promise. I promise, it's, you know, it's, 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 okay, I'll see you in, in a few minutes. But then what happens? I get to the boss, I run out of ammo, and I die, and now I'm mad. Because I didn't beat him, so I have to go back. Spend another 20 minutes getting to him, another 20 minutes fighting him, and I fucking run out of magic. Ah, oh, fuck! Three hours later, why are you not in bed? I told you I had to beat the boss. I'm the boss, motherfucker, and I'm gonna beat you. Get to bed. She's scary when she's mad, dude. She's scary. I, was, I wasn't gonna do this looking at my phone, but uh, someone texted me, so fuck you guys. <laughs> it's important. You might get some. Um, do you guys realize that right now, as we sit here, whoops, I almost deleted some shit. Right now, as we sit here within a two mile radius, there's a monster that can eat you. Does nobody care about that? But nobody has even Nobody even realizes how dangerous our life is. You could be walking to your car at the end of the night and get attacked by a fucking bear. Does that not concern anyone? Or is it just me? I've seen bears. They're monsters. And people are always like, oh, you know, bears, snakes, spiders. I'm scared of all that shit. I don't like it. And people are always like, no, oh, well, they're more scared of you than you are of them. Like, really? Because when I see a bear, does he shit his pants too? <laughs> I don't see anything running down his leg. <laughs> they don't play dead. Who just play dead if a bear attacks you? Really? 
So it's easier for him to pick me up? <laughs> Fuck. Play dead. Don't run, they'll just chase you. Just play dead. I'm not playing, motherfucker. <laughs> dead. I was talking to somebody the other day about, uh, I like to think the zombie apocalypse is gonna happen. Yeah. I do, and I'm ready for it. And some of you guys are looking at me like, you know, I don't think you're in shape. I don't think you're gonna survive the zombie apocalypse, and you're right, I'm not really in shape. But I don't have to be. I just have to run faster than you. <laughs> That's it. As long as I run faster than you, I'll survive. Because not everybody can run. I can't run for shit. Um, so I just <sighs> celebrated a birthday recently. I didn't want to. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> These motherfuckers. <laughs> um, I turned 40. Yeah. Surprising, isn't it, right? Because I get carded for cigarettes. So fuck you guys that don't. <laughs> Be jealous. Dude, when I was when I was little, 40 was so fucking far away. I'm like, I remember my dad's 40th birthday. I was like, what, 11 years old, 12 years old? And they had like black balloons, black candles, black icing on the cake, a little tombstone with his name on it. I was like, fuck, my dad's gonna die? Well, that's 40. Goddamn 40 seems so old. So long ago. And now it's here. And it is old. <laughs> it feels it. It sucks. I haven't been visited by the angel of death yet. Waiting patiently. I'm feeling that bitch is coming. 40's old, man. 40's scary. It changes things, man. You can't. You can't look at women the same way at all. Like when I was 30, I could check out an 18 year old, no problem. Now that I'm 40 and I look at an 18 year old, she, she might be my daughter. <laughs> this is kind of creepy. She's hot, but she couldn't be. <laughs> Excuse me, was your mom a whore? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. I always thought I was gonna be so, I was gonna have so much more going on in my life by the time I was 40. I'm like, I'm married, I have a job, I have children, I live in a house, I have a car payment, I'm paying for my cell phone. I thought I was gonna be so much further ahead though. I thought I was gonna have like a career, I was gonna be set up for life, like I'm gonna be 40, I can retire. No, that doesn't happen. I never knew what I wanted to do with my life. I'm 40 years old and I still don't know what I'll be when I grow up. <laughs> scary. I see uh, there's just so many jobs out there. I can never decide what I want to do. Like uh, I always wanted to be a construction worker, like road, like on the road crews. And my dad was like, you can't do that kind of work. So I'm so what are you talking about? I can do this. <laughs> I'm on break. <laughs> do that shit all day. I'm gonna smoke a cigarette. For you, old son. It's heavy. Um, yeah, 40 sucks. 40 sucks. Did you vote, Paige? Yeah. I didn't. <laughs> That's one of the one of the joys of being 18. I can buy lottery tickets and cigarettes and I can vote. Or not. I've never voted in my life. Okay, I take that back. I may have once back in my third grade when we had to vote, should we play kickball on the, on the playground or in the gym? Maybe I voted for that. That's it, I don't really give a fuck, you know? I really don't care. I know I should care. Well, we should care. Be an American. Well, I will be an American. I'll take what I want and beg for shit that I don't deserve. <laughs> it's my right as an American. Get free shit from the government. I remember when I was, uh, <laughs> I remember when I was about 19, I was trying to figure my life out. I had already got denied to join the military. I don't know why, it was this little pink piece of paper. Oh man, I wasn't 
fit for the army, but maybe I'd fit in the Marines. I'm not really sure what that means. Something about a psychiatric evaluation. <laughs> Something, I don't know. So I was going to school, I was going to college. Ooh, I was going to a technical school. It wasn't even college. It sucked. And while I was there, I had this career counselor that I had to go talk to. She was just going to set me up for my future. And she actually told me, at 19 years old, this woman told me if I ever do, that I should look into politics. And I should do it. And if I ever decided to run for president, she wanted to be my campaign manager. Because I would win. As she put it, I was highly intelligent and had a lot of great ideas. Isn't that the scariest fucking thing you've ever heard? <laughs> if I had followed her advice, I could be standing before you as the president of the United States? That's fucking scary. <laughs> Would you vote for me? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Woo! You guys are fucking crazy. <laughs> yes. I like it. I like it a lot. I'd let you guys come in the front door of the White House. <laughs> some of you come in the back door. <laughs> so, yeah, guys. Good night. Keep it going for Tom. Man. So, I'm a. Uh, I'm a, I remember certain, I deliver pizza, so I have to get gas a lot. I remember certain gas pumps in this area that don't ask for certain information. I call them sluts. I love sluts. Sluts are those random gas pumps that the whole line of the 14 gas pumps that don't care what your area code or pin number is. They're just like, please put it in me. Just go as soon as possible. As soon as you can get out of here so we can get to the next person, I need it. It's, tri it's uh, pump number 14 at this sheets. Uh, are you guys... Are you guys sick of this Shake It Off song yet? I know, like, shake it off, shake it off. Everywhere I, I go, all I hear is shake it off. Fucking in the stores, on the radio, on my CD player, on my iPod, in my headphones. So annoying, right? <laughs> guys, this next comic is very, it's, it's very exciting because there are two comics that haven't performed any original material in over three months. This guy performed at our Halloween show last month doing Pat and Oswald's material and I'm very excited to finally have him back doing original material. Everyone, keep it going for Brooks Hoover. this bitch, uh, my good friend Thomas, actually forgot one part of his set, and I want to hear it so bad, because apparently it was one of his funniest parts, and I'm going to invite him back up here, and I'm just going to sit right here and listen. So get your ass back up here, motherfucker! Don't worry. I'll wait. Are you going to hold the microphone so you can... I mean, I don't want to do a commentary me. and the yeah. feedback. That would be cool. Feedback. No, I'm just going to sit that right here, cool. That would be cool, though. Come on, like Daddy just, just starts doing you, it funny. You want me to sit on your lap? Yeah, well, of course. I don't always want you to sit on his lap. No, I was just thinking about um, politics and how, um, how stupid elections are in general. And how now, it's imperative that you go out and vote for your constituents. Vote. Rock the vote. Rock it. Whatever the fuck that means. How do you rock the boat? Uh, with your cock out? I know how to rock the boat, but not the boat. I'm not really sure about that, but... No, I was thinking about pol how crazy politics are in general and how stupid it is that we still elect people by vote. You mean assholes? But not real. we don't even elect them by vote, right? There's this electoral college that I never got into, or I never got a scholarship. Yeah, it's like points by state or something? Some bullshit, right? Your state's better than most states or something? It should just be a vote. It should be like, who do you pick? Who do you pick? 
Okay, he wins. See, I thought right. that was the, the rule, but apparently... It's not. It's not. It's, it's an antiquated... Voting is an antiquated system, and I think I have a solution. Lay it on me. Are you familiar with Vince McMahon? <laughs> yes, of course. You guys know who I'm talking about? Yeah. That, uh, that's the solution. Let Vince McMahon run the elections. Stop with all this voting. Anybody that wants to get in, all you have to do, you don't even have to pass a physical. All you have to do is show up. Just throw the top 30 nominees into the ring, and whichever one's left standing at the end of it, I guess you get to win. 30 men enter, one man leaves. Or women. Or women. Politically let, correct. Let me say, Hillary might have some dirty moves. She might be a bad motherfucker. She's gonna cunt punch you know. some people. Because, I mean, if you think about it, Cunt punch them. Cunt punch? It's called dyslexia. I know, I, know a, I know a little bit about your sex life, but now I know a little bit too much. We like it rough. Punt punch. I'm not sure what that means. But it would, make, it would make it so much easier to just... I mean, when you vote for someone, you want to vote for the you want to vote for someone who's going to get shit done. Like, think about how much politics and, and professional wrestling have in common. They come out, they tell you what they're going to do, who they're going to do it to, and you believe them. And then they go do it. <laughs> now listen, brother. Exactly. Oh yeah. And you, you don't. Well, politicians do that, except they don't actually do it. They're going to say that. I mean, if the fucking Undertaker walked on stage and told you he was going to walk out of the cage with the title, you would be likely to believe him because he's like seven feet tall and a bad motherfucker. <laughs> right? So, yeah, you want someone who's going to get shit done. Tell me what you're going to do. Oh, yeah! We're going to have a strong foreign policy! Yeah! No one would fuck with us. No one would. No one would care. It would be a whole lot different. We're gonna elect someone named Jeb to be president. Like, whose ass is he kicked? Really? He's, you know, I, was, I don't understand it. I just think it would be a lot easier if we just let people beat the holy shit out of each other and whoever is left standing, and you think goes, oh, guess what? You're the toughest motherfucker. You win. You're. I, the I would rather elect Jake the Snake than Jeb Bush. Yeah. Just. But I mean, I can see it turning. I can see it turning bad because once they get into office and they're like, "I'm the baddest motherfucker in the country. No one's gonna fuck with me." And every time Congress tries to pass something through, he'll be like, "We're gonna settle this in a cage match." He won't be able to veto shit. I just want to see Nancy Pelosi and, and every time he and, and every time he tries to like, "We're gonna give free health care," like, "No, you're not." Like, oh, tables, ladders, and chairs. You and me, Congress. It would be crazy, and it would, it would, it would be awesome. Anything that lets me see Nancy Pelosi and Sarah anything Hayes that lets you see grown sweaty men rubbing each other <laughs> is basically what I need. But I'm gonna leave. Okay. But bye, guys. Give it up for Tom. Woo! Sorry, I just had to end the show, guys. All right. Where's my fucking water? <laughs> Holy shit, what the fuck Mario jokes again? Mm -hmm. Alright, so I, I just want to start off by, where's Loris? Is he still here? Loris? Loris? Oh, well he's not here anymore, but he was talking about uh, going to fast food places and ordering too much and feeling awkward about it, and I literally had this experience two days ago. There's a witness right there. I went to, to Little John's and I was ordering three sandwiches, one for her and two for me because I'm a fat ass. And I got up there and the guy's like, yeah man, what you want? And he's like, I'm like, all right, I want a Chipotle chicken and a, uh, a nuclear sub and an Italian. Can I get that? And he's like, no. Seriously? No, you get one sandwich. Oh, okay. Made me feel like a fat ass. Yeah, he literally said no! I'm like, what kind of service is this? Oh wait, it's Jimmy John's. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, in the past couple shows, uh, back over the summer, I had talked about uh, my drug use and how I had used drugs to pass some of my classes. I used some Adderall last year to pass some of my exams. And back in college, I had used some harder drugs. Shh, don't tell anyone. 
<laughs> but uh, I kind of talked about how there was a niche for every drug, and I want to revisit that, because I, I hadn't touched upon all the drugs. And I want to just cover my bases. Now, some of you tonight may be drinking alcohol. Yay. Yes. <laughs> Clap if you're drinking alcohol, yes. <laughs> Love alcohol. But alcohol is for those that, you know, just want to get fucked up. But then you have marijuana, which is though for those that, you know, want to sit back, relax, and unwind, you know, for a while. But then you have salvia, for those that want to sit back, relax, and unwind for like 30 seconds. <laughs> but then, you know, you have uh, things like tobacco, for those that, you know, like to be alone outside for 20 minutes at a time every two hours. That's great. But then you have things like, uh, you know, get into your pills, like Adderall, for those that want to, you know, be studious and get things done. But then you have cocaine, for those that want to get things done forever and be the man, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> but then you get into your psychedelics. You have shrooms, when you want to feel great, go on a spiritual journey and see some funny things. Or then you have acid, where you want to see fucking fucked up shit for like eight hours at a time. <laughs> and then you're getting even to your even harder drugs, like heroin. For those of you that are just trying to get more heroin. <laughs> and then you have methamphetamine. You know, I love doing crystal meth when I want to try and get these bees out of my teeth. <laughs> and then finally you have opium. For those that are trying to cope with the drastically shifting economic landscape, Brought on by the rise of British industrialism, yes. <laughs> Bully, mm, quiet, mm, yes. Mm, oh, yes. So, I, uh, I want to wax philosophy with you all for tonight. Um, uh, maybe it's because I'm getting older. And as you get older, things change. The things that you hate, you start to love. And the things you once loved, you start to hate. And, you know, as you grow, uh, they say that you start to change friend groups. Every, you know, three to four years, you actually shift from one friend group to another. It's like you say to yourself, you know what? Fuck these assholes. I'm gonna go hang out with these assholes. <laughs> but it gets worse when you get into a relationship. Every time you get into a relationship, science shows that you lose uh, two to three friends. Which makes sense on paper, because you have to devote time and uh, energy to cultivating this new relationship with a person that you will maybe one day love. But that just means that you have to kick off assholes five and six, and you still have one through four to hang out with. But that's why I've elected to have a fuck buddy. Because, and I'm surprised that, you know, more girls and guys don't do this in 2014, but you get to hang out with your friends, do the things you like, and then go home and stick your penis into someone's vagina. <laughs> or asshole. Let's let's be PC here. Yes. Now, uh, also, I want to give it up for uh, for Trevor here. Um, when you got up on stage, were you uh, getting out of jail or coming out of the closet? Which one was it? Yes. Yes. There we go. <laughs> so, and I, I want to give you all an example. I work with this guy named Billy, and he's in a relationship as am I, and. Uh, you know, he's talking about his uh, relationship with his more serious girlfriend, and, you know, he comes, gets, goes out and gets dinner with her, and then comes back, and, you know, they're sitting on the couch there, and he's, you know, looking uh, at the TV screen, and she looks lovingly into his eyes and says, Hey, Billy, can we watch Beyonce Drunk in Love? I need to see it for, like, the 50th time. He's like, okay. And then, like, a minute or two into it, he's like, I'm gonna go walk the dog. And then an hour later, he's getting on a phone call while I was on the bench in a park somewhere, saying, where are you? You've been gone for, like, a while. He's like, oh, I'm on my way back. While me, with my fuck bit of relationship, I'm laying in bed naked, post-coitus, with a glass of brandy in my hand, and the girl with her arm around me looks in my eyes lovingly and says, hey, can we play Halo? I'm like, fuck yeah, we can play Halo! <laughs> fuck Beyonce, let's kill some dudes. <laughs> Not to say that, you know, being in a fuck buddy relationship, I don't have my own problems. Uh, and I'm the one at fault, truth be told. Full disclosure, I tend to have a particularly explosive ejaculate. And, uh, 
you know, sometimes it gets in her hair and her face, and, you know, she gets mad about it. And I'm like, I'm sorry. It's unexpected. You know, there's no warning. I can't control it. It's like Mount St. Helens. You know, and she gets even more mad that I would even make that comparison. I'm like, Brooks, why would you say that? People died. I'm like, yeah, but you can't blame my penis for that. They were in the way. <laughs> How many times do I have to say sorry? <laughs> but while we're on the subject of bedroom talk, I want to revisit uh, the subject that Laura, or, uh, Winston had about uh, being rough in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, it's actually quite common that men and women both like being rough in the bedroom, but for me, I've never been too into it, and that's probably because from a young age I've been doing martial arts, and I've been, you know, trained to, you know, reserve hitting someone for, you know, self-defense purposes. So, you know, I'm trying to bring my A game and give her the D good, and all of a sudden she's like, ah, ah, hit me. Um, Okay. <laughs> Harder. Uh, okay. Harder. Harder. What the, do you want to fucking punch you? What the fuck? And so, you know, I was really getting fed up with it. I'm like, all right, let's quash this, you know, in the bed right now. I am going to, like, come up with something, like, you know, super kinky because eventually the hitting is going to lead to like, you know, holding down, to choking, to like whatever else. So I'm like, okay, think of something kinky. So at work, I had these little zip ties, you know, that's the, uh, Trevor, you know, you've been arrested. The ones that you get, you know, put on behind your back. Like that. You know, those zip ties. And I was like, I'll just bring a couple of those home and tie it to my bedpost. And that'll work, right? So the next day, she comes over and... I, I use them, I tie her up, and she's really loving it, you know, and her, her arms are up there. And, you know, I'm fucking her, and she gets so into it, so she starts tugging on the zip ties, and it starts to cut into her wrists. And she starts liking it, and I'm like, fuck no! No, stop! We gotta take you to the hospital! Cause you're bleeding! And she's like, no, I just keep on going. I'm like, no, we're going to the hospital! So then I gotta take her to the hospital. And you tried explaining that to the doctor. He's like, well... Uh, let's see, young man, uh, she's got uh, bruises on her face and deep lacerations on her wrist. Um, how would you explain this one? I was trying to please her in bed. <laughs> and he's just writing things down. I'm like, why are you writing that down? Uh, I have to keep a record. Stop that. Nope, I gotta write it down. Please. And then her parents show up, which is even better. And as soon as I can get a word in, the dad's like, what the fuck happened? And the doctor's like, well, apparently this young man tied her up, and she's got bruises on her face and lacerations on her wrist. And that's when he pulls out his gun. <laughs> and uh, I'm really glad that I had run so much track and field uh, when I was younger. But the more I should, uh, if anything you, think you should take away from this story is, if you're going to have sex, do it under the covers the lights off, with five condoms on, fully clothed, and as little touching or movement as possible. <laughs> because then you won't have to outrun bullets. <laughs> and I will say before I go, uh, Allison, you did a great job for someone, you know, I've been doing this for almost like half a year, yeah, give it up for her. Really pisses me off though when someone just comes up and makes me look like a douchebag. Because <laughs> I've been trying really hard and all of a sudden someone comes up and it's like, I fucking kill it. You know what? <laughs> hey. Fuck. I had something else. What was it? Thinking, thinking. The clap. No, fuck it. All right. There it is. Thank you. Good night. Super. 
Good to have you back, Brooks. Um, so I've been thinking about Jesus lately. <clears throat> because I couldn't do much more of that if he came back. <laughs> Uh, but I was thinking about if he did come back, Jesus would fucking hate America right now. Can you imagine the Comic-Con lifestyle that is celebrity right now? He, all of his Sundays are just being booked at churches signing Bibles. And St. Peter, his agent, is just like, all right, we got the Baptist down the street. And he's just like, oh my God! I'm sorry, Dad. <laughs> Uh, and, and regarding Jesus, we all think it, when I say Judas, what do you think of? Priest? I, I love that more of you think about Judas Priest than the betrayer of Jesus. I do too. But I was talking about the guy who apparently betrayed Jesus, and I was just thinking about, like, his legacy. Like, we all refer to somebody who betrays us as a Judas, right? But let's be realistic about it. The guy that, the guy Judas, the night he earned that title, all he did was tell the government where Jesus was. Now, the next day, let's say he hadn't done that. The government would have found him anyway because every newspaper is like, guy performs miracles at Jerusalem. Everybody's heading there anyway. If he had waited one day, Jesus, Judas would have had a better relationship with all of us. We'd be looking at Judas as a hero. All I'm saying is, praise Judas. <laughs> all right. So, this guy got a job for a few months that didn't allow him to be here, and it made me very upset every show that we put on that I could not say his name to present to you guys. But now, tonight, I bring you, as our closing comic of the evening, a returning performance from our very own member of the Comedy Square Table, Farley! You know, I thought it was bad enough being put up last, you know, getting to be the closer after three months of being off. Now I have to follow Ken getting his cherry popped? Good. <laughs> That's bad. How's everyone doing? Three months off, I'm so glad to be back. So glad. But uh, you know, over those three months, I've been able to rack up some material for you guys. Yeah? So like, I realized the other day that, um, I've heard so many times how people say that, you know, like, kids, they're like a sponge. They, they catch on to everything going on, they'll repeat anything. And I realized that my kid is the sham wow of kids. <laughs> like, me and my wife the other day, we got into a heated argument. And uh, we were in the kitchen, and I look at her, and I'm like, you know, you're being a real bitch. And she goes, yeah, you're a pussy. And turns around and walks away. And I, I'm pretty positive. My kid was not anywhere near that room. But two days later, I'm reading his bedtime story. And the last page on that book, there's a picture of a house, a dog, and a family. And I look at my son, and I say, son, what do you see? And he goes, a bitch, a pussy, and two kids. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's a mom. A dad, a broken condom, and a failed experiment that was a Ziploc bag, duct tape, and vegetable oil. Right on <laughs> See if he repeats that. <laughs> so I come home uh, a couple weeks ago, um, and I've, I've been doing truck driving, so I've been gone a lot, and fuck that, I quit. Um, so I come home one weekend, and, and my wife brings out this piece of paper, and she says, your son drew you a picture, and I'm like, oh. I look at the picture, and I look back up, and I'm like, for real? And she's like, yeah. And she turns around and walks away. And I look at my son and I'm like, what is this? He goes, penis. <laughs> yeah, I get that. So I'm like, honey, why did he draw me this? And she goes, it's a truck. No, it's missing the front wheels. There's, that's a penis. She goes, he wouldn't draw that. I'm like, no, honey, this is a dick. <laughs> so she walks back out of the room and I look at my son and I say, what is this? He goes, Penis. Really? And he goes, you dick. <laughs> He's been listening to his mom way too much. <laughs> yeah. So recently, I also, um, within the last couple weeks, my sister and her boyfriend moved in with me. With us. Um, 
Okay, they're both 17, and my sister is pregnant. No judging. You guys can wait a few seconds, and then you can start judging. Um, I always had all these like hopes and aspirations for my sister that she was going to grow up to marry a doctor or a lawyer, because she's a few fries short of a Happy Meal. Fuck that. She's the hamburger, the fries, and the cookies missing from a Happy Meal. She's a fucking toy in a bag. She's a dipshit. But I realized the other day that all my hopes and dreams for her were shattered, kind of like that guy that went hunting with Dick Cheney. Like, you know, he was hoping for a really good day. Just got shot in the face. Um, I took this little boy shopping, and uh, we're, we were going through the store, and he goes off to go get drinks, so I'm left standing there in the cereal aisle, which, by the way, is fat guy heaven. <laughs> Did you know that grocery stores, the cereal aisle, is legit an entire aisle of cereal now? I'm standing there, I'm like, do I want the... Regular puffs, or cocoa puffs, or frosted puffs, or cocoa frosted puffs, or the cocoa frosted puffs with a little bit of lard? I'm unsure. Well, he finally comes back, and I'm like, dude, what kind of cereal do you like? And he goes, I like Raisin Bran. Okay, that's easy enough. What are those little dried up grapes called? Are you serious? Yeah. Really? Oh shit, raisin. <laughs> I look at him and I'm like, do you need to get a helmet? And he goes, I don't ride a bike. I'm like, no, your kid's gonna fucking need one when it comes out. <laughs> and it, it goes on, my little sister, like I said, she's only six weeks pregnant, so she's not even that far along, but she's playing it off. Like, you know, everything is, I'm pregnant. <sighs> I mean, I walk in the house, you know, and I go to pour a glass of milk. Who drank all the fucking milk? I'm pregnant. Who used all the toilet paper? I'm pregnant! Who took a shit in the sink? I'm pregnant! It's fucking crazy. So we're sitting on the couch the other morning and uh, she looks at her boyfriend and she goes, Baby, will you get me a bowl of Rice Krispies? And she's like, yeah. He makes it to the doorway and she goes, Can you put a teaspoon of sugar on it? And legitimately this boy stops, slowly turns and says, I don't know how much a teaspoon is. We waited a minute, and I'm like, dude, it's the small spoon. He goes, I just thought it was called the little one and the big one. I really hold no judgment for the Augusta County school systems now. And I am definitely thinking this child's going to have issues. Yeah. So I was also talking to this little boy the other day. We got on the topic of wrestling, because my grandfather, before he passed, he was a really big wrestling fan. So we were talking, and he was like, yeah, I've been watching wrestling for years. And I'm like, really? And he goes, yeah, since at least 2007. Really? That's definitely a long time. So I started naming off some of the old wrestlers. Like, you know, Macho Man Randy Savage, Hulk Hogan, Mr. Perfect, the Million Dollar Man. He was like, I don't know any of those guys. No shit. He's like, but when I was a kid, I used to love wrestling. And I'm like... That kind of struck a nerve with me, because I really hate it when a teenager uses the phrase, when I was a kid. Hmm. When I was a kid, I used to do this, or when I was a kid, I could eat anything and never gain a pound. No shit, asshole, because that was what, yesterday? Seriously. It's kind of like when an old person tells you, I can still drive, but they're explaining that to the officer on the scene of the accident where they just wrapped their car around the fucking telephone pole that came out of nowhere. Yeah, doesn't make any fucking sense. <laughs> the fuck does that say? Shit. Hold on. Got it. Alright. So, when I was a kid, I always had these hopes of growing up, and I wanted to be a cowboy when I was a kid. That was what I wanted to grow up to be. Because when you're a kid, you have dreams that are kind of out there. So, and then I grew up a little bit, and I started realizing the reality, and I'm like, fuck it. <laughs> I want to be a gynecologist. <laughs> but in reality, I'm a 28-year-old truck driver who wears a cowboy hat and has tunnel vision. I mean, that's kind of close, right? Yeah? Maybe not. So, I also got, I mean, within talking to this kid, I, I was realizing how much shit has changed since I was a kid. Like, all the TV shows that I used to watch when I was a kid that are canceled now, like Looney Tunes fucking got canceled for a while. Because it was too violent. Because Wile E. Coyote would fall off a cliff, and you know, he'd be perfectly fine, or he'd drop an anvil or a piano or blow up a rocket. In my opinion, he should just stop ordering shit from Acme. But, whatever. So, they canceled that. And what did they replace it with? I was watching TV with my son the other day, so that's what brought this up. Uncle Grandpa. I can't even explain that show. 
I don't get it. The other one was Sanjay and Craig. A show about a little boy who has a pet snake that he talks to, who talks back, who also dresses like a little boy so he can go on dates with chicks. So this is what we've come to in America, is we've traded out violence for inbreeding and bestiality? I think that's a worthwhile trade. <laughs> so, within also the, the TV shows, I got thinking about, you know, all the things that were different when I was a kid, like, safety is huge now. I mean, like, when I was a kid, I remember getting my first bike. I didn't have fucking training wheels. And we lived on a hill. And when I say we lived on a hill, our front yard, you could look down the road like this and see the main road. And I didn't get a helmet. And my parents realized that I couldn't ride my bike in the front on the road because I would go down to the main road and get hit by a dump truck. That's a fear. So they had me ride in the backyard, which went down like this. And it went down to a tool shed that went across the back of our yard. Not a lot of thought was put into this. So needless to say, I found out what our paint tasted like. <laughs> Not very good. So then my parents upgraded me from a bike to a mini bike. And if no one knows what that is, it's a child's bike with a fucking motor on it. Yet again, still didn't get a helmet. <laughs> oh, and by the way, mini bikes have one brake. It's a little tiny handbrake right here. And if it breaks, you're fucked. <laughs> you just keep going. So within like the first five minutes of having this, I happened to find the one gopher hole that we had. <laughs> Flipped over the handlebars, caught the rear tire to the front of my forehead right here. But no, it's okay. I still didn't need a helmet. Screw it. Parents stand over there. He's good. No, he's good. He, he's not. He's fine. I mean, he's not moving, but... Wait, he twitched. He's good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Thought we were going to pay off for a helmet. <sighs> so then I got upgraded to a go-kart. Alright? Now I get a helmet. For something that has a governor, which means it can't go over ten. Four wheels, racing seat belts, and I'm pretty sure a roll cage that was designed by NASA. <laughs> yep, this is where I get a helmet. Definitely. So that was, I mean, that was that part. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible, right? So me and my wife, we were talking the other day about, you know, some of the stuff we used to do as kids that we regret now. Like, I don't know, all the stupid shit that we used to do. Like, jumping off roofs into half-filled kiddie pools that we pushed a little bit too far away from the house so we never actually hit the pool. Or daring our friends to stick their tongues to frozen flagpoles. You know, maybe it's a good idea they canceled our shows. <laughs> That's all I got tonight, guys. Thank you so much for having me back out. Guys, keep it going for Farley. All right, so that is the end of our individual comic segments, but we have two improv games. Are you guys, are you guys up for those? Woo! Awesome. So, the first game we're going to play is called Set List, and we're going to bring each comic up individually, and after they do their set, they're going to line up along the stage, and then, then we're going to do our last game called Hashtag Wars. Are you guys up for that? Yeah. Alright. So, I'm going to introduce our comics in order. Paige Campbell, are you still here? All right, Paige Campbell, everybody, give it up for his encore performance for Set List. All right, Paige, so Set List is basically, it's an improv game, it's an exercise for stand-ups, and having an audience here may seem like a cheap practice, but having an audience is the only way that we can practice. So what I'm gonna do for each of these comedians is name a random subject that you guys suggested earlier and hope that within the 90 seconds our comedian can make you laugh and we're gonna do this with each of our comedians so Paige your very first subject and, and by the way if, if it's going nowhere I'll lead you on to a different subject um, our very first subject is Gary Oldman you have 90 seconds sir what's, what's funny about him? exactly right that's what I was thinking like, I mean, he, he told Batman what to do, but on a much quieter volume. It's like if you watch Batman, if you watch the Dark Knight movies, Batman's like, I need to go do this. And Gary Oldman's like, I need to go do this. <laughs> That's all I can think about uh, yeah. uh, regarding Gary Oldman. Yeah. All right, so I'll move on to our next topic. Uh, uh, manginas. What do you think about men with a pussy? 
Uh, I mean, you know, go for it. <laughs> I mean, absolutely, you know, if if it's there, if, if there's a, if the grass green, if the grass is green, play ball. That's my <laughs> philosophy. So yeah, if there's a mangina, absolutely, go for it. Get in there. You know, slide in there. Uh, that's all I got on my. Do, do you do you? So if a man hits on you, right. does it change anything if he tells you he has a vagina? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're you're, yeah. you're in then. Yeah, but it, 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 uh, the inverse of it, if a woman has a dick, what's the deal with that? Uh, I'm asking you. Oh, uh, no, no, no women with a dick. You're not ready to bend over for a woman? No. <laughs> I mean, my girlfriend does use a strap on, but <laughs> so you're not cool with an actual dick. You're yeah, you're not cool with real dicks, but fake dicks, you're still straight. Exactly. All right, I think that's a pretty pretty. Uh, what is this Fisher Price? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Paige Campbell. Paige, uh, line up, line up over here. We're gonna get everybody lined up and then do hashtag wars. All right, our next comic for the night, uh, Allison. Are you still here? All right, Allison is here. Um, Allison, your subject is Ebola. What do you have to say? Ebola? Oh god, hold on. I've been drinking. Um, <laughs> Me too, we're in the same boat. <laughs> we're about to get sick. We're contagious. No, with Ebola. Like, I know I should be logical and be like, I'm not gonna fucking get Ebola. But like, all my Snapchats, I just draw blood coming down from the eyes now. <laughs> and I mean, like, I, I'm actually a concept artist for a local, like, software development startup or whatever. They were like, draw some horror concept art. And I was like, blood out of all the eyes. That's my greatest fear. <laughs> no, that's why I don't travel. I don't go anywhere except my apartment here, apparently. So, I mean, no, my dad's a doctor, actually, so I think I'm pretty safe. Um, however, I do like to like take all of his business cards and cross out like family medicine and write in shot doc and give them out to people in downtown mall. It's pretty fun. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, Allison, everybody. <laughs> Allison, are you gonna come back? Are you gonna perform again? I mean, if you, if you guys let me, I would love to have you back. Yeah! All right, li line up over here next to Paige. We'll have you play uh, hashtag Wars in a second. Uh, your third comedian tonight was uh, Loris Jarvis Jr. I don't know if I said this or not because I've been drinking. But this is basically encore. Everybody, uh, applaud for uh, Loris earlier. <laughs> So, Loris, your your subject is cigarettes slash dope. Oh, uh, hi, Allison. Sorry. I just I uh, separated from my wife now. Just to let you know, just by a couple miles, she's at home. But it's all right. Uh, so, cigarettes slash dope. Um, I started smoking like eight years ago out of boredom because I would just go outside at work and all of my friends were out there smoking and I started smoking and I, it was like, at first it was just, let me bum a cigarette and then once I got to the point where I was buying my own packs I realized that I was addicted to cigarettes and I was like fuck this and I quit um, and, but that, that's my story about cigarettes that's, it's pretty funny well it's, it's funny and I'm glad I quit when I did because that cigarettes were like well, I don't know three bucks a pack then I don't know how much they were now it's something ridiculous I, like ten dollars a pack maybe not here but in New York which is where I go to buy cigarettes they're like ten dollars a pack which is fucking ridiculous um, dope much cheaper um, and then much more fun and I, uh, I've told a story before up here where I, uh, my, my therapist got me hooked on weed because he told me it, would, uh, it was a better cure for my depression and anxiety than alcohol. Um, <laughs> your, your therapist in Virginia told, my, yes. told you illegally to smoke pot? He, he said that if I had to self-medicate, marijuana was a better tool than... Uh, then it's okay. You can applaud that. Yeah, <laughs> and it was, uh, and I applauded him. He's my favorite therapist I've ever had. <laughs> I keep trying. I don't know what happened to him. I'm not going to mention his name because it's probably wrong what he did. But he did cure a lot of my other anxieties. He told you so. He was like, you know, go do comedy. What's the worst that can happen? And I was like, the worst. You don't tell someone with anxiety what's the worst that can happen. <laughs> you know, I could, 
be on stage and my family's in the audience and they get raped and murdered in front of me. And, uh, that's, that would probably be the worst. If you guys saw me at the beginning of the show, that's the worst that can happen. No. <laughs> All right, uh, everybody give it up for Loris. I'm not done. No. <laughs> You're done! All right, thank you. All right, uh, keep it going for Rosie as she makes her way up here. All right, Rosie. All right, Kenneth. This is a very uh, male-centric subject. I'm so sure it is. <laughs> Every fucking thing here is. Let me Even the female comics are male-centered. <laughs> Let me know if you want another one, but... Uh, oh, I get a choice? Wow, what a refreshing... Hey, uh, women have special rights at the hotspot. <laughs> um, sure. Okay. Uh, this is, your subject is zombies. Man, I thought that I was gonna get the pink bunny rabbit, but whatever. Zombies. Um, I'll take it. That's what was given to me. What, what do you think about zombies? I mean, they're my favorite monster. Really? Honestly, yeah, they really Over are. Over your mummy? <laughs> <laughs> Don't talk about my mother. I said about your mummy. <laughs> Anyway, uh, zombies are my favorite because you don't have to feel bad about killing your best friend. <laughs> I mean, everybody thinks about killing your best friend. There's always that moment where you're just like, God damn it, you, I know that the only reason why Sharon knows about that abortion is because Gillette said that to her. And you're just like, fuck her, I'm gonna kill her. <laughs> I, I guess Zombie is the solution. All I need is a zombie outbreak. And I feel bad saying this, but Tom and I honestly talk about zombies all the time. Like all of our family. Like Tommy's like, well, what if Tommy, our my stepson Tommy, who's 13, he's he's now all of a sudden concerned about like the apocalypse. I don't know what's happened. Real issues. Yeah, really. Like like Ebola, nothing. No. Like politics. No, I don't care. AIDS. No. Teen pregnancy, he doesn't care. But zombies. Zombies. That's the real issue. What's our zombie pl pro like plan, Mom? Well, honey, we have lots of mach lots of machetes and golf clubs in the basement. Well, what about guns? No, 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 no. See, that's where you're making your mistake. Guns make noises, so all the zombies will come to you. These are real, live, like serious issues. No, none of this is funny. Like, I just take zombies very we're, we're, seriously. We're bookending the show with soapboxes. I'm hoping that we'll leave the, the show tonight and there'll just be a horde of zombies that come in. I'll realize my dreams of getting to kill real life human beings without feeling bad about it. And then maybe somehow the, all of this will seem funny. True. <laughs> True. Rosie, everybody. All right, uh, our next comic coming to the stage, Ian Oldman for his encore performance and set list. Ian! Hey, hold on, before we start, can I do two uh, jokes from old topics? Do it. All right, Gary Oldman, the less famous Oldman. <laughs> that didn't go as well as they planned. I got it. Uh, and the second one is Ebola, barely even newer. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, alright. What do we got? What do you have for me? <laughs> Those are good, again? but you have 60 more seconds. Your subject is Walmart. Walmart? Uh, I made the joke about like there being more gay people in Walmart than like at a gay club. I think that's uh, really like an interesting facet about Walmart. Because everyone's like, oh, it's the people of Walmart. There's that website, the people of Walmart. It's like, look at all these crazy people in Walmart. It's like, yeah, people flock the cheap shit. That's a nice thing to have. I think the crazier people are in fucking Costco. <laughs> like, I go to Costco for brunch, uh, like that. I like, got half a Swedish meatball. No mind if I do. Those, those are the people that need, like, an extra portion on faith. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Hannibal Burris has that joke about, like, you know, being killed after you, like, shop at Costco. It's like, please don't kill my guy. I just bought six hundred dollars worth of like toilet paper. I think that's a good like that's good. That's right. Like people spend a ridiculous amount of shit. Um, like at Costco, you don't need that much panini bread. Just fucking put the panini. Like your kids. I get it. They're like, oh, I got like kids to feed for the next few months. Like your kids aren't gonna like spinach salad for that long. <laughs> I promise you. They'll like it for one day. Be like, oh yeah, it's good with grilled chicken. I guess yeah. It's a nice balsamic. 
It's like, I hope you like for the next six weeks. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Ian Oldman. All right, keep it going for Trevor Stewart. So, so Trevor, you, your set was based around, you spent uh, some recent time in a very uh, ruling uh, location. A location with a lot of rules and guidelines. You could say that. Okay, so uh, in relation to that, I, I think you might have something to say on this. Your, uh, the next two subjects listed are either uh, Korea or butt sex, and I think you might have some insights into either of those. <laughs> Well, <clears throat> uh, I, I'm not good with geography, so I'm gonna s stay away from Korea. Um, hey, Korea stays away from butt sex too, don't I, That's also part of why I'm staying away from Korea. They don't like people like me. But if you really want to know about butt sex, um, you can come back to my place tonight. <laughs> my girlfriend just went to Costco and got a big thing of lube. <laughs> I'll invite my boyfriend, too. And as you know, I can run a camera. There are sites for this on the, on the interwebs. I can make a lot of money off of this. The only person who, does, who doesn't like it is Kim Jong-un. <laughs> that's not what he said last time, but... He told me not to repeat that. Ladies and gentlemen, Trevor Stewart. All right, our next comic coming to the stage uh, for his art performance is Winston Smith. All right, all right, Winston. What do you have to tell us about Target? Tar oh shit! Well, or Bojangles? I still don't know what that is, but you can talk about either. Just wow! Bojangles. How very coincidental. Bojangles is a chicken joint, so that's racist. It's appropriate. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know what to say about either one of the- Oh, well, damn it, now I gotta pick Bojangles. <laughs> you would! Oh, god damn it. So, like, there- a Bojangles actually opened up in Harrisonburg, like, a month ago, and they're like- Yeah! I, yeah. Yes! And when I heard about it, I was like, god damn it! Because you don't want to be first in line when you're black, because they mean, like, of course. So, like, I gave it, like, a little time, like, two days. And then, when I got on there on the second date, you know what I realized? Uh, the stereotype is not true. White people like fucking chicken, too. I have no idea what the fuck you guys are talking about. Like, this shit is crazy. Like, I wanted to actually talk about this a long time ago. The stereotype is not real, folks. Like, you motherfuckers like chicken. But I'll, if you want to give it to it. us... I'll admit it. Yeah, if you guys want to give it to us, I'll take chicken and you guys keep panini bread. <laughs> Winston Smith, ladies and gentlemen. I do like watermelon too, y'all. But it only matters if you're black. I don't like watermelon. <laughs> yeah, right. All right. I'm old. <laughs> and that's how I got pulled over for um, driving while black. <laughs> Eating watermelon. Ladies and gentlemen, Thomas Wagoner. I, I was just sitting over there wondering how uh, racist it felt for Winston to be told to line up against the wall. <laughs> and then I looked at Trevor and I was like, poor guy's having flashbacks. <laughs> line up against the wall! <laughs> okay. <I'll squat> <laughs> alright, alright, Tom. So, um, tell us about either, um, your interracial dating or, <laughs> or cell phone awkwardness. Um, it's really, uh, kind of awkward. <laughs> like that? Yeah, I can't, I can't get it in. It's too big for the hole. That's an interracial dating problem. <laughs> it's really awkward when you're on a date with your black girlfriend and your wife calls you on your cell phone. That's kind of like, oh, you yeah, know, she's my sister, really. Uh, there's nothing funny about interracial dating, Ken. This is 2014. I didn't there should be interspecies. Well, wait. <laughs> I've been around Trevor too much, I'm sorry. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Wagner. All right, uh, our second to last comic of the night, Brooks Hoover, or as you might know him, Brukusaru Hoover. I think he went to the bathroom. Brooks, where are you? Yeah. Hey, guys. <laughs> I like sex. <laughs> Jason Groves, woo, and karate. I've been to Japan. 
This is a joke center only playing to people who saw Brooks the first time. Here he comes, here he comes. Everybody, put your hands together for Brooks Hoover. All right, Brooks. All right, Brooks. Uh, your subject, since you supported this, sorry, I had You supported this at the beginning, so you have to go with this. You got 90 seconds on Rosie's tits. Yes. Hmm. <laughs> yes. Well. You wouldn't take it that long. <laughs> As you can see, she's chosen a, a multicolored sweater. And uh, the, 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 you can see the, the light shades upon her nipples, the areola sticks out in a lovely fashion, yes. I want to say, she, uh, she was interposing about how she would, uh, you know, squeeze them if a man was gesturing towards her. To which I would reply, not the, not the best choice of action. You know, you might have some that would say, mm, baby needs some milk. And then they would come up and try to, you know, uh, gesture, and have a little suckle. <laughs> and, uh, yes, yeah, so, I'm sorry, I'm just going to stay for a moment. And one, and two, and boom goes the dynamite. Okay! <laughs> Brooklyn Saru Hooper, ladies and gentlemen! Alright, our last comic of the evening, give him a warm welcome back to Farley! All right, Farley, we have two subjects left. You can, you can pick the decline of modern society or airplane food. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Do Bojangles again. Do Bojangles <laughs> Oh, airplane food. All right. Um, well, I did actually, I, have, I was talking to a couple of comedians in the back. And uh, Winston was actually really pissed off because uh, he found out that Bojangles wasn't going onto airplanes. So, <laughs> yeah. I got nothing for that shit. Hey, give it up for Farley as an encore. Alright, are, are you guys ready for Hashtag Wars? Yeah! Alright, so how many of you have seen the show At Midnight? Woo! Alright, so for those of you who don't know, At Midnight is a show that uh, capitalizes on internet uh, society. And uh, a hashtag is a subject that you can search and will provide many different uh, uh, possibilities for the same subject. Our hashtag for tonight is hashtag ruin a classic. Now, this can be a song, a movie, or a TV show, and I have examples for each. For a song, hashtag ruin a classic, we have stairway to heaven is for real in theater three. Uh, for a movie, we have uh, Star Wars 5, The Empire Backs Down. And uh, for a show, we have Breaking Badge, which is a guy who gets cancer and decides to spend the last days of his life doing good things. So, ruin a classic. Let's hear it, guys. The funniest one gets our ending applause. What was it? This hashtag, Sarah to Heaven is Real? Uh, ruin a classic. Yeah, we're, oh, we're in a class. All right. You can do a song, a TV show, a war movie. All right. Hashtag, we always had Fallujah. <laughs> that Disney movie, uh, A Part of Your World. Excitement abound. I just cannot wait. Relax. I don't want your baby. I already ate. But I do tend to generally kill. Kill things that don't fight back. <laughs> I see this village, what should it hold? What should I kill them with, fire or cold? It do gently, gently think, I'm a homicidal maniac. I kill kittens and puppies and bunnies. I maim toddlers and teens and more. You see a wife, I see a widow. But what then can't you see I kill for? I like to incinerate and decapitate. I'll keep going. I want to melt, I want to melt some faces. Brooks Hoover, everybody! <laughs> Ruin a classic. I feel like I'm always the one that's like the cane for fucking Brooks. <laughs> Just so you know. Anyway, mine is hashtag Jaws. <sighs> <laughs> I think only the women got the joke. I got it. You mean the uh, smart one? Because of blowjobs, right? <laughs> Hashtag oh. con shot first. It's already been done. 
All right. It did, he did ruin a classic, I agree. I got that. Ruin a classic. My last set where I did uh, Arlo Guthrie's uh, Alice's Restaurant. <laughs> the stench in the air, the oh smell God. of the gore, the carnage far greater than any war. <laughs> Hashtag dark side of Brooks's moon. Oh. <laughs> I've seen that. It's the underside. Was done. Old Yeller people. <laughs> Passion of the Christ 2, Jesus' Redemption. <laughs> Way to call back, man. I like that. Uh, I got a movie starring Anthony Anderson and Jerry O'Connell. Uh, it's a, a dramatic movie. It's called The Kangarooceable. <laughs> Andy's mom's Toy Story. <laughs> Showgirls 2. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so scared. Sex Toy Story. <laughs> Boo! Yes, oh, wait, the good one. All right, if, if no one else has anything else, Brooks. You gotta take us out with what you just started. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. I forgot the rest. The what? Um, okay. Um, wait, that's not what it is. I don't know. I can't remember anymore. Does anyone have anything else? Ruin a classic? Page. Finding Nemo's sexuality. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Paige Campbell on the closing joke. Oh, oh, hold on, I, you said uh, Stairway to Heaven. Uh, I think the ruining classic is mentioning that all the people from Led Zeppelin were pedophiles. I think that's... <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming out tonight. Give yourselves a round of applause for supporting all of these sillies. Thank you for coming. We will be back in two weeks. We're doing this every other week until further notice. I appreciate you all supporting us. Thank you very much. I'm Ken Edwards. See you.